What's up, everybody? Before we get into the show, I want to thank you for watching it on YouTube. And if you're watching right now and you haven't subscribed or you haven't liked or turned on our notification, do it right now. Go comment. We love you guys interacting with us. And of course, if you're watching, you just see Brandon's beautiful hair. You just see Jack's face. Me and Katie, we're hanging out. It's a great time. If you do subscribe, you'll get not only these full episodes, you're going to get fun clips. You're going to see us hating each other, loving each other. Make sure you definitely subscribe and share our videos. And right now, we're close to what, about 5,000 subscribers? When we hit 10,000 subscribers on the Unnecessary Roughness YouTube page, I am going to... One of the two of you. Anyways, that's an exciting thing to do, right? So make sure right now you subscribe, you share. Also, just go ahead and comment on it. You hate us, you love us. Make sure you comment and interact, and I hope you enjoy today's show. Hating on schools of thought, hating on ideas, hating on. Are we about to fuck? What do you mean he gave? Oh. He said the answer. There we go. No, I'm for you. We're all out of meat sticks. I can't. It's processed meat. I'm not eating processed meat. <laughs> what? Not processed meat? What are you, like, holistic now? What the fuck? Just trying to take care of myself. That's not a thing. It's a thing. Processed meat is the same calories as regular meat. Also, beef jerky is good for diet, but... Yeah. Yeah, it's heavy in protein. Low in carbs. Yes. Zero in carbs. Yeah. I, just don't, I just don't want the meat stick. Then you throw it to me. Do you want to give Kay your meat? No, I don't want you to have the meat stick. I got unlimited you, you right can, here. You can give Casey. It's very your much meat. not unlimited. There's a, that's a box. You can give Casey your meat stick. You want my meat stick? Yeah, I do. No, I don't because I can't open it. Give it to me. I want to play with it. <laughs> Sorry. You, Jesus. It's not Christ. for playing with. It's for. All right. Focus. <laughs> we do need to do this podcast. Are you gonna eat it? Yeah. You're the one with the hard out. Yeah, no, so it was just you, you two in fights last night. Yeah. No, 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 no. For like happy hour, and then the whole bar ended up getting filled out with Barstool people. Yeah, it was like Chicago. I know what you're trying to say. You're trying chocolate. to make it seem yeah, no. like we had a threesome. We didn't. We were at a bar. I'd just like to say congratulations to John Feidelberg. <laughs> Sounds like he had one hell of a night. I don't know. I mean, Can I start the rumor you had a threesome with fights? Uh, no. No, Playboy Marty. No. Oh uh, absolutely oh, not. That's, Katie would never share him. No, you cannot start that rumor. I mean, he's already. Hey, did, it. Your, did you? Did your sister text you telling you how good yes, I look? Yes, actually. So she DM'd me. I thought she was joking, so I had to double check to make yeah, sure. Telling you how so good I look. So she DM'd me a reel from the Barcelona Sportsbook account of you and and Marty. Yeah. And she said Brandon's looking with the fire emoji, mm -hmm. and I said what? Because yeah. I thought she was joking. I thought she was being an asshole. Yeah. And she said his facial hair, and he looks thin, and his hair looks really Do you nice. Think she's just attracted to bad gamblers. Maybe. That's her type. I, I thought you're the hottest gambler here, though. Uh, I'm I'm getting there, yes. But she, no, Marty, but she, Marty she is said this you, month, right? On Pixar. You look thin. Hottest is attractive. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You look thin. Yeah. Your facial hair and your hair looks nice. And then I said he's flattered. He does look nice. Can and you she, text her? And then one she thing said Matt looks great too, but I, that's all. I don't know who that is. Can Marty. You, can you text her? Mm -hmm. Sup. He says sup. And, and that he's down 18 pounds. Oh, I already put that in. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's lost 18 Congratulations pounds. about that, by the way. It's I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to joke about the processed meat. It's just like processed meat and regular meat, same calories. That's all you care about. That's fine. I just I, I, people it, don't realize we're talking about this beef this, jerky. this meat stick beef right stick. here. Meat stick. This meat, meat stick. Uh, Katie mm -hmm. ended up stuffing the whole thing down her mouth. But <laughs> yes. th this meat stick right here, I just I don't know if I start getting down. This one's probably fine, but if I go down a slippery slope, I start eating. We've all the, eaten meat sticks. I today. know what you're saying. You start with the meat stick, and then before right. you know it, yeah, I mean, it's donuts. The, the donuts. Yeah. Right. No, yeah. no, no. But see, the thing is, with these meat sticks, it's all protein. They're so narrow, though. They don't even fill up your mouth. Yeah, but they do. How would you know? Good eaten, point, Katie. I've eaten a meat stick before. Really? College was different. <laughs> 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 Let's start the show. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Unnecessary Roughness Barstool's College Football Podcast brought to you by High Noon Hard Seltzer. Just going to go ahead and tell you, if the previous 30 minutes of us trying to do the show is any any indication, this will be a highly sexual and ridiculous show. So, I am joined by the beautiful and lovely Kate, <coughs> Casey Smith. Hi, Casey. <laughs> what the hell was that? I uh, coughed. Thank you. That, that was a weird cough. That was like a hybrid cough sneeze. Yeah, no, I couldn't figure out. It was just something stuck in my throat. Mmm, the meat sticks. Yes, no, okay. Uh, <laughs> I know in hard It's not my fault. I'm looking at this board that Anus made, and the first name it's is... <laughs> Come. 
Darnell, come. <laughs> you know what that is? That's uh, they did impressions of the Saturday Night Live announcer yes. announcing the cast, and they Darnell, come. <laughs> you know, and it's Casey uh, Anthony D'Elia is pretty good. Do you know what the third one is? Racial slur? Oh, no. Oh. I saw saw racial slur. Racial slur. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you say, yeah, no, I I know what it is. (laughs) Uh, Um, But I just, it's it's very distracting to just have the word come in your face. The word. It's right there. The word or the thing. Okay, so uh, how about. Would you have experience with that? High noon hard (laughs) seltzer. High noon hard seltzer. Have you seen? Have you tasted them yet? I haven't tasted them yet, but I've heard all about them. So we got the passion fruit. And the mango. And the mango. So the new tropical. So we're up to eight flavors now. Yeah, it's an eight pack now, and it's the summer. So the tropical edition is watermelon and pineapple, which have already existed, right. plus passion fruit and mango. And I haven't tried either one of the new ones. Which one do you want to try more? Mango. mango. Or, you want to go? I, I'm mango too. Yeah. I will not be surprised if mango overtakes peach. You think so? Because That's I high like, expectations. Well, because I like the fruit mango more than peach. Now, I like both of them a lot, but if I had to pick, I would pick a mango. My only thing is I don't know if I can get rid of the peach now because everyone is on the peach train on Twitter, we've the, seen. The peach train. Yeah. But you can get the, the limited. Um, I was on the peach train in college. We broke up. Um, all right, so we've got uh, what that means. Co- college football. We've got plenty to talk about. We you got can some see me this week. Huh? Remember last week you couldn't see me? Yeah, yeah, you have. Have I moved or have you moved? Or you moved the camera? I moved the camera a little bit, Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, So we have some NFL draft news. We have uh, Kansas has hired a football coach. But really, it's it's the off season. We, we this is the gateway to hate month, and we're gonna talk to you guys about hate month, and we will build up to the way we're gonna do it is every week this month. Sorry, I don't know what's in my throat. Meat sticks. I haven't had a meat stick. I just had my prepared meal that I made from home, my chicken breast and my um, my chicken breast and sweet potatoes and and the other vegetable that I made. Um, Which so one was it? Was it green? Was it leafy? Was it cousin, have you seen it before? Cousin of the zucchini. And it was it was very, very good. I have no idea what we were talking about. You were going through what we were going to talk about on the show. Oh, hate, hate month. Now, so here's how we're going to handle no, hold hate on, month. Hold on, wait. For a little background. You pointed me. For a little background of people that don't understand why May is hate month, last yeah. year we created hate week when mm-hmm. I was particularly spicy. Right. Um, and we were in quarantine still, so we were doing it. We were via, mad. We were via Zoom. Big we mad. We didn't know we were going to have a season. Big mad. Yeah. Um, and I was with my friend Kayla who just fed me Jameson shots the entire episode, so we just got madder and madder as we went. Have you noticed that every time you have a, uh, you have you drink on the show, the one time after the bowl game and all that, yeah. it's always, you've got somebody there feeding you drinks? You, well, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, sorry, didn't realize Well, that. I mean, I have good friends that they make sure I don't Didn't realize you had, you had drinking teammates. Oh. You got a lot of drinking. Teammates. I have a lot. I have more drinking teammates than non-drinking teammates. You got a full teammates. NFL roster, a 53-man roster. Oh, for sure. Yes. Um, but I hate week was a personal thing for me, and then it became a podcast thing, and now a year later we're doing a whole month. So hate month, and we're going to hate week will be at the end of May every year, and hate week is going to be a a party. Hate week is going to be a big show. It'll be all hate that week. All hate. As we lead into hate week, we're just going to sprinkle the hate in throughout the month. Because four straight weeks of, of just pure hate, too yeah, much. I can't do that. But we can have appetizers. Because I Hate I've, appetizers. I've always said hope is the most valuable currency in college football, mm-hmm. but hate is the most abundant. Wow, it's so philosophical. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, just put it on a t-shirt. Yeah, that's why my, my wife married me. Sorority girls that's are so having it painted on their wall. Mm-hmm. Of their room. What? Um, so, what else we got? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we have <laughs> uh, Katie. I got to give a shout out to Katie Stats because when she joined uh, the show, there was about a six month period where I was wondering, what does she do for us? Uh, but that's not true. R- that's n- no, it's all jokes. Okay, it's all jokes. Okay. I just want to make sure people know that that's not true. We're good. So there was not a six month period where I wonder what she what she was doing. It was an eight month period, and we were wondering, and she has turned into the greatest. Twitter troll, maybe in college in America, and you've yeah. created some graphics. We're going to talk about on the show. I want to talk about uh, Dan Wolken. 
I also want to talk about Clay Travis. I'm going to go to both sides of the aisle and pull him back into line. Uh, and I'm going to rank the NCAA football covers for EA Sports. My Hope top it's five. the most valuable what? Commodity. The Currency. No. Say it again. No. Currency, yes. The most valuable currency in college football is hope. But the most abundant is hate. I've said this many times. I know. Currency, the most valuable currency. <laughs> is that a problem? <laughs> We're gonna do, we'll do a quote card graphic for it. The most valuable currency oh in college football is hope. Oh, my God. But the most abundant is I hate. Really I love this. I, you've said it before, but I'm just going to tweet it out with credit to you, of course. Like yeah. From right. Monastery. Of course, of course. Yeah. But this whole the show should be a credit most to abundant no. is hate. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Hate Month. Yeah, but don't say it like that. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> and then we're going to, hopefully we'll get to something. I'm not going to introduce that. because Well, well I have something we'll I have it. to be mad at you about. Why? Because we Why are you were, mad at me? Well, because on the group text... We were about to have an argument, then Jack put the kibosh on it, and he said, save it for the podcast, and then you left the group. I think this is wild coming from you. What, what, what you're about to say to me. Well, no, we'll talk about it later. We'll I tease thought we'd it. do it now. Let's no, just let's, do it now. Let, no, let's, no, 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 no. Why do you leave the group text, though? I've only left it twice. The once, first time was because I couldn't trust had you guys. Fun. Once we had no, a fight. Tru- excuse me. Jack, you couldn't trust. Right, I couldn't. Yes, tr- we, but yeah, but that happened a long time ago. No That's need a, to bring up old. That shit. was I, I stand by leaving that time. Yes. Uh, this time, you, we were having a discussion. You put a topic out there. I said my answer to that topic, and you freaked out. Well, what the fuck, Brandon? What? what did you just no, both both Jack and I disagreed with you vehemently. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think. Well, I want to talk about it now. Okay, fine. Let's talk about it now. All right. So Jack set it up. I did not disagree with him vehemently. I just said save it. You oh. just read vehemently. You yes. K- Katie, bring up the. Um, is there any way you could bring up the one of the graphics that you made that Brandon just mentioned? Oh, that yeah. I thought you were going to do the. By the way, the if you're listening group. on audio, Katie just pulled up a graphic behind Brandon and Casey. So if you're so watching, so you YouTube. can watch if you're Hello. watching YouTube, you YouTube? see what we see now, and that's a big. If you have time, I know some of you guys listen on your way to work. Maybe you're on a walk or run at the gym, but if you ever want to watch us. You can watch me and Brandon and Casey and Katie okay. and yeah, on YouTube. Weird. All right. That was weird, Jack. So Katie, <laughs> her, her first graphic I'd like to talk about, uh, she came up with a troll graphic. It's one of those classic, you have $15 to spend. Uh, there's a $5 line, a $4 line, a $3 line, a $2 line, a $1 line. Now, I think she pretty much did this entire graphic solely so she could use the Ed Orgeron picture with oh, the yeah. girl. Oh, yeah, 100%. It, it kind of back the, – the placement of Coach O and Spencer did backfire a little bit. So you put Spencer Rattler at $1 just to queue up Oklahoma fans, yeah. get them riled but up. But it, it backfired because it was like, oh, it's great value, easy pick. So, eh, But Katie was okay. trying no, no, to no. – I think Katie thinks Grayson McCall is a better quarterback than Spencer Rattler. It's, I, I think Spencer Rattler is overrated, but I think we'll, we'll have a whole QB debate later. We'll have plenty. No, 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 no. I, can I tell, think she I, thinks Grayson McCall is a better quarterback she than Spencer might, Rattler. But I can tell. You remember the Jalen Hurts year, how, how contentious it was between us? I'm going to go ahead and tell you with this list of quarterbacks, we're going to have one hell of a 2021. Because yes, you're going to be yeah. Miss Spencer Rattler, and I'm going to be – I, I'm going to be. We're not going to have a hell of a 2020. No, Sp- Spencer Rattler is good. Throw, he's going to have 50 touchdowns this year. Yes. He's just. He's but, unbelievable. He's so good. Yeah, he'll, yeah, he'll be great. He'll be the Heisman. And he's then a lot he'll of good get beat tools. by 40 That's in the playoff. Every, let's dance the Oklahoma dance again. Let's Fine. do that. No, Fine. Yeah, we, can, we can talk about the validity. Oh, ESPN released a top 25 Tom Ligababini, whatever his Lugan name is. Lugan Bill. He's a great guy. Yeah. <laughs> he really no, is. I nothing, really like Tom. No disrespect to Did you see he was number one? Oh, Bo Nix. Uh, college football teams? Oklahoma. And then Jordan Palmer, Cost, Carson Palmer's uh, right. brother, brother, yeah, said Bo Nix is going to be the number one pick next That's year's NFL draft. And, and, uh, what? Yeah. You didn't see this? In the jo- NFL draft. NFL draft. Not like he'll be picked. Number one. Overall. Overall. Is he, was he high? No, he said it seriously. Bo Nix is going to be number one. That's the dumbest thing it's ever. A, it's so I'm going to be honest, though. Jack, I think stop. he get drafted, but when – I'm just going to say something. Jack. Oh, no. When BYU played Houston on Friday night this year, Andre Ware put up a graphic and had Zach Wilson as his number two quarterback. And everyone he, destroyed him And for everyone it. laughed That's at true. him, including me. Now, Bo Nix is a little bit different because Bo Nix, we've seen out at all. We've seen him be horrible. Yeah. So, But I'm just saying, there are, we did have something this year. There, there was, There's a precedent of laughing at a thing before the draft and then it comes – 
I feel like a lot of people, though, that were laughing at Zach Wilson, I mean, you obviously watch every single game, but a lot of people just didn't even realize, like, how good he was. We know what Bo Nix looks like. Can I say a take? Sure. Sure. We'll get to the graphic in a second. So we're looking at a graphic, five quarterbacks this year. It's DJ Uy- – uh, Sam Howell's the top. He's the $5 one. Then you've got DJ Uyunglele. Then you have Grayson McCall from Coastal. The $2 is Matt Corral. I'm just going to go against everything that I believe in and everything that I've ever – I think – Sam Howell's the number one quarterback this year, probably going in. Matt Corral could challenge that. Matt Corral is going to be very, very good. How big of you? Pretty Wait a big. second. But I'm, huh? Would you put Matt Corral above Spencer Rattler? No. As far as pure, no. I think I would. No. Okay. I mean, I mean that's listen, shocking. Yeah, but Rattler had big I, – I would argue – I don't know what their net stats were, but they got to be very close. Matt Corral had gigantic numbers last yeah, year. Yeah, he did. I'm not saying that he's a bad quarterback. He I plays just as the closest Rattler. thing to a Big 12 team in the SEC. He they was number. He had the third highest QBR in every other player. That every other player that was around him in the QBR this past season is got drafted, except for one or two, I think. Also, JT should be is like a number five value on this. Uh, I mean, Corral threw for 3,400 yards and 29 debatably. touchdowns. He throws too many Minus interceptions, but Mac. Uh, I think Grayson McCall. I think that this, the reason people, you said because people were like, this is a really good value, that's what backfired on that? Yeah, yeah so people, it was like too higher. easy of a pick for yeah. people. People were more, yeah, oh, they it's were easy taking pick it than yeah. legitimately and like, oh, I get Spencer Rattler for a dollar, right. not yeah. fuck you, why don't you make Spencer exactly. Rattler a dollar? Right. Same with but Coach O. The reason we had. Well, Q- Coach O is a $1 quarter, uh, coach. I don't even, I, I guess we just put him there. I, I, I wouldn't pay a dollar for him. Yeah. Uh, so we, we had our beef, our fight. Based on the mascots. And you were yes. like, who should be the $5 mascot? Who's the best live animal mascot? No, we didn't say live animal. We just said who's the best mascot. Yeah. I think live animal when I think of that. We're thinking of car- costumes and cartoons? Well, just in general, mascots. Now, live animal mascots are cooler. I but it was just, well, what's the best mascot? Because this one is pretty fucking funny. When you ask me the best mascot, I immediately think of the animal that corresponds with. Okay, fair. So if you ask me the best mascot, the most re- recognizable and best mascot. How are we reversed on this? Last week you were Miss Texas's top ten program. Now you're... I say the best mascot, the number one most number one mascot in college football is Bevo, Texas Longhorn. First of all, I stand by all my Texas takes from last week, which people from A and M were pissed about. But I, I stand by that Texas is a top program. I would rather be a Texas than Notre Dame. That's in the past. Crazy. First of all, do you know why Bevo is named Bevo? Not even a clue. Because A no. and M students went, and his name used to be Varsity. A and M students way back in the day. Broke into his fucking farm, <laughs> branded him it's thirteen to zero, form. which was the score of the game, and they didn't want him to have thirteen to zero branded on him, so they made it into Bevo. The best mascot in all of college football cannot be a name that your rival gave to you. I counter. Bevo is a much better name than Varsity. I agree too. I'm glad that happened. Bevo, but. but- they only did it because of, of Aggies. My argument is not that Reveille is better because I do believe that Bevo – now, I think Reveille is much better, and I will get to the new Reveille. But the the Longhorn itself, like the, the logo, yeah. great. That fucking cow is disgusting. No, it's not. That's a beautiful He's animal. It's a regal animal. disgusting. There's flies all over him. Like, And I, I love animals. And how could anybody vote it, Ugga over Bevo when uh, Bevo almost killed Ugga two years well, ago? Well, and Bevo also is very unique. I'll give you that. There's no other longhorn that I know of, no other cow. However, if we're going to talk about the best live animal mascots, you have to put a tiger. No. You ha- no Mike I, the tiger is. You have Clemson and LSU. Mike rarely gets out of his like, cage. But he's a around. fucking tiger. They always have to. CBS always has to show him in that little cage. He, he, he's not a cage. He has a whole. When does he go to a game? He, he never goes to games. He's a tiger. You can't just take a tiger to a game. Brandon's one hundred percent right. You can't if take a tiger to a game. If you don't go to a game, you don't go, if to, you games. Don't go to the games. They have to drug these animals to go to games. I'm not a fan of that. I well, well if you're not, a fan oh, they they drug. If you're not a fan of that, then you can't be a fan of putting them in a cage. It's a it's a drug is the least of their concerns. Yeah, they're going to not drug a tiger. Yeah, you know who well, else drugs people they, at LSU? Jack. Everybody. They're football players. Jack, the fucking tiger has a beautiful habitat, a beautiful home. I've seen it millions of times. So we're doing he's best happy. habitat? No, I'm saying he's happy. You think Bevo is happy being Dude. drugged and put in a trailer? All I know, no. All I know is when LSU comes out of that tunnel and the and, and it's Saturday night in Death Valley and everything and it's all it's football night in Louisiana, when they run out of that tunnel, that tiger ain't nowhere to be found. When Texas runs out of the tunnel, they run behind this big, beautiful son of a bitch right here. Because they drug him. You, you can't, don't know that. Yes, I do. What, cow, what drug are they going to give a cow? The calm down one. Yes, they have to. That's why when he almost went after Ugga, they hadn't drugged him enough. 
I would go a, one first of, all, a ti- a, first of all, a tiger is just way better than a cow. I'd go one Bevo. We all know that. One Bevo. Mm-hmm. I disagree. I'd go two Ralphie. A buffalo. A gigantic buffalo running on the sidelines. And then three, Mike the Tiger. I'd go four, probably Ugga, although he's obese and needs to be uh, taken care of better. He's obese and ugly. He has a an air-conditioned home on the sidelines. Good. He's obese. I've been inside of it. He's not a healthy bulldog. It says, uh, according to some ABC subsite, that it's not. He's not. He is. He's not drugged he in is. loud Bevo's spaces. Bevo's not drugged. Yes, he is. It's I'm, natural. I'm it's organic the beef. Article. I'll get back to you. This is, Bevo is organic beef. All I, naturally made. He he would be I angry. Eat, I mean, you're telling me that a cow that has to wear this fucking chain thing that I'm oh, pointing yeah, at. Walk around killing people? No. But that's my point. Is it a tiger? I you can't the, let a tiger out on the loose. I think the chain is cooler. I would make the argument that Auburn's eagle should be up there. The way it flies. That's not. That's only half their mascot. But it's it flies around and it knows exactly Auburn, where to land. Auburn doesn't count. Auburn isn't eligible. You got to decide from decide on a mascot. That's you can't have a tiger true. and an eagle. That is true. I, but the animal itself is really cool. So at that time, it flew into the glass. It was sad. And then didn't he? Who? What was the eagle that fucked up before a playoff game? Or was that before an Auburn BCS game? Cal- I think that no, no. I think uh, that's when he Auburn flew in. Game. He flew into the yeah, glass one time. Right? Yeah. He like flew into the glass of a of a of a suite. Yeah, it's not good. So also, yeah, we got to start a petition to get rid of the tiger slash eagle. Make a decision. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I that's fine. But the eagle itself is very cool. I just think if I, I love animals, if I could have all dog mascots that were taken care of as as good as Reveille is taken care of, I would. But I think a tiger is just way cooler than a cow. But he doesn't go to games. That, I don't. Bevo runs out. Bevo, Bevo, impress. Bevo is there. He is very Bevo's iconic. The number one Be- mascot in Bevo college is very iconic. He's not a fucking tiger. Bevo is the number one mascot in college football. I don't think and so. And you got mad at me for that. No, I, I, because you weren't even listening to me saying that a cow that smells He's bad. He's not a cow. Yes, he He's is. He's not a cow. Cows that, give milk and, 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 and have calves. This is a dick-swinging bull. That's what that is. That got is. named by their rival. This, this guy got a dick down to his knees, okay? This that ain't no cow. That got named by their rival. You jealous? Of the cow? Well, in certain elements, yeah. <laughs> Probably lives a better life than I do. No, Bebo... Oh, because of the penis? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Bebo is... Oh, yeah. No. Katie and I had a whole long conversation about how we wish that we were uh, Reveille at A&M, the way that oh, she's taken she, care of. She you, pointed out all the way that Reveille's treated. It was Did you know impressive. that she is the highest ranking military official at A&M? Probably the smartest, too. Oh, uh, that was mean. Good I mean, one. That was low-hanging. Yeah, you gotta, that, that's <laughs> um, If we're talking about <laughs> biggest... If we're talking about biggest balls... In mascots, Ramsey's. we're talking uh, UNC, UNC yeah. Tar Heels yeah. balls. Oh my god! It's I saw, I saw. Could you pull that up just for everyone to see? I think there's a lot of people who haven't seen the how balls. How do we get this far in the show without the Ramsey's balls? <laughs> it's alarming. It's truly alarming. <laughs> there's le- 175 Google. I mean, I. I mean, I, I feel bad looking stunning. at it. Yeah. I feel bad looking at that it. That doesn't even look. That looks. That like doesn't look. It looks, looks photoshopped. Like That's just. Do they drug him? Not that I'm. A, he no, just sleeps. They, they drug. They drug on the ground when he walked in. <laughs> oh my god, it's oh so painful. <laughs> How is he able to stand up? Hey, he, he's listen, he sleeps a that lot. That guy knows what he's doing. He knows what those balls are for. I mean, they're just so big. I kind of got an issue with y'all painting his fucking horns. At least it's like it's his horns. It's like not it's not not like sink into his skin. That's I mean, a, I don't like branding that's a bad animals, dude right but there, man. I mean, I get, it's I feel like truly uncomfortable looking at it. Yeah, it, it's, right it's right. so bad. On the YouTube, it's gonna be right next to your head. It's like a hornet's nest. Are you, is he now. teabagging me on the YouTube right no, now? He's yet? almost. He's <laughs> almost pain manning you. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay. Uh, what was I? Oh no. Is it working? Yeah. So let's do. Let's do. Can you stop focusing on the balls for a second? I wasn't. I was just resting my head on them. <laughs> if I had a nickel. Okay. Um, Sorry, mom. Let's. Uh, you think your mom still has any problems? She's got a callus at this point. <laughs> Both of your moms. There's no reason to even apologize. Oh, at this my point. dad reads Reddit. So. Oh well, that's. Well, that's a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. All right. So you did the graphic. I don't think there's much we can say about this graphic. You, you, you did no, f- people were people were furious. The Pac-12 was not involved. Yeah. Well, that was that was you, right? No, that was Katie. I thought that was you. Okay, uh-uh. I thought you said it was like agreed upon. Yeah, but we had five four five dollar conference SEC, four dollar conference uh, Big Ten. 
three dollar conference ACC, two dollar conference Big Twelve, and one dollar American Athletic Conference. No Pac Twelve. Yeah, and the Pac Twelve got a little upset. Blattman, Texas, both yeah. like this is fucking disgusting. I I, I I thought the stadiums were a little stupid. No, I mean, the stadiums. Been, how are the stadiums Michigan stupid? Michigan and 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 Ohio State. And I said the Big I House asked, should be after the Rose Bowl. I asked for input. Oh, I mean, I gave you input. You said Big House should be number one. I, but I forgot about that's the Rose not the Bowl. Number one. Yeah, no, the, forget the about Rose the Rose Bowl. Bowl. Forget about the Rose Bowl. You think outside of the Rose Bowl, the Big House is the number one stadium in college football? I do. No. Which one is? Tiger Stadium, LSU. There's At night, no yeah. LSU. There's no SEC stadiums in the stadium list, which yeah. was it should, uh, Tiger really Stadium should the be there. Also, is that Nebraska? Yeah. The reason yeah. I well, because I was gonna do three LSU things. I'm tr- I was trying to apply to more fan bases. So that's it's like, fair. It's like Bluefield definitely should not be there because that's an eyesore. No, I like it well, being the one dollar though. So it's a one dollar. It so insults it's like, it. It's in the worst it one. Insults that's it. true. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. So it's like it's no, rankings. but it, but the only if I had to criticize the graphic, if it's the one dollar one, we're doing categories and not rankings. Spencer Dollar Brattler can't be a one dollar. I agree with that. But Sanford Tree is the oh, creepiest no, I, thing in the I world. Know. It definitely Spencer should be Spencer Rattler is not $1 value. This is straight up a troll job. I, I know he's in contention for the highest. Yes, high. I think when you talk about stadiums, if we take the Rose Bowl out of it, because you're right, the Rose Bowl is number one, undisputed. If you well, ask. I don't know if I believe that, but oh, okay. Oh, I mean, just the way it's shot on camera and everything. Yeah, it's like it's an it's icon. Again, I keep going back. Iconic. It's not. Um, I think more people, like just, if you just ask like random college football fans, name the first stadium to come to mind that's not yours. I think the big house is probably one of the most popular. It's just it looks if so plain north, and boring. If you're in the north, for sure, it looks very boring. There's nothing exciting about it. It's, I mean, it is. It's and the noise the all goes house. up. It's I've heard gigantic. it's quiet. I heard it's quiet there. It's it, not quiet it, there. Yeah, I, because the noise goes. The noise doesn't have anything to bounce off. Of. And they're not on top of the players like Rensselaer Field. It goes out. Yeah. <laughs> you were, yeah. He, he was really on your the side. The one stadium I think would. Like, if I'm putting two Big Ten stadiums and one of them's not Beaver Stadium, I think Beaver Stadium should be there before the yeah. Horseshoe. The Horseshoe is pretty fucking cool, too, though. Yeah, but Beaver Stadium's cooler than the Horseshoe. It just I is. haven't seen a game inside Beaver Stadium, but I have seen one inside the Horseshoe. I've never been inside Beaver Stadium either. Oh, mm. the cool thing. We can do this graphic again with different options. Yes. Sure Kyle so. Field should be now, on Now, it's the second graphic you made this week that has just blown my skirt up. It's just my favorite thing you've ever done at this company. Um, so, Katie just... Full on troll mode at this point. She, just. she puts out the best college tailgates in every state, and it's a United States map with the logo of the team with the best college logo in the, the tailgate in that state. Now, she showed it to me originally, and she had Ole Miss's Mississippi. I said, nope. It will, and you are so serious, it will too. piss yeah. them off more if you put all, uh, Mississippi State there because Ole Miss. They know their football team sucks. They know they have to cheat. They know they're not good people. But they believe their tailgate's the best in the country. And when you insult their tailgate, you tear them down. So I said, we're definitely insulting them. Uh, so we put Mississippi State there, and they're predictably whining about it. But it's just so many friends. Like, like South Carolina at uh, – South Carolina being the South Carolina representative here, Clemson fans are beside themselves. Beside themselves. Uh, Texas, Texas A&M Carolina. fans are pissed. So I, Katie came and showed me this graphic, and – the th- me, her, and Jack were having a conversation, and I t- absolutely disagree with Texas. And not because it's like, oh, it's because it's a and I just don't think that Austin has better tailgates. I would put Texas Tech there. Shout out Lubbock. Everything that Texas Tech fans do is extra, and they party harder than anybody else in Texas. Ask Patrick Mahomes. It's just a fact. I have – Texas ahead. should not be there. And it's not even just because it's the rival that of, of my whole life, but it's because Austin is not a college town. It's a geographic. Huh? It's a joke. No, no, but people on people serious. But people online, people online don't realize it's a joke. That's the thing. It's like I when I said go ahead, put it out with Texas, and then I will talk about it on the podcast. But then I responded to it and I said, "What in the fuck is this?" People don't realize that I knew this was happening, and they're like, "Oh, get the fuck out of here, Aggie, A G G Y, fuck College Station." It's like, well, first of all, I would put Lubbock there first and foremost. Second of all, I knew this was happening. It's all a joke, people. People don't understand that. I. Alabama fans are, are upset about yeah. Auburn being there. Can we go back to South Carolina? I would. Yeah, we're going to go there. I would have one more troll I would have done. I would have put Arkansas State as Arkansas. Well, you, have to, you have to toe the right line. I know. I know they would have known that was a troll. What's another one people are really mad about? Uh, is it let's Purdue? Go back to South Purdue. 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 South Carolina real quick. Uh, Clemson fans are upset. What would you but have I think But I think the South Carolina thing is honestly – That's legit. Yeah. Legit. They've got good tailgating. They do. Looking, I would put Clemson uh, Clemson ahead. fans play the whole I, – I don't know. Clemson tailgating is Also, just let's go more northeast. You for, you're forgetting a few just like blatant I mean, yeah. Oh, I know. Purdue, people are furious about Purdue. Northwestern. 
Sweet. Okay, so the so Fordham. I have a fr- I have a friend was well, not really a friend but an acquaintance who I've met in my other podcast. He is the CEO of All Elite Wrestling. He owns the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's in that family. Um, he owns Should. he owns Fulham. Yeah, you Should. know who I'm talking about. So this is not he's not your friend. He texted oh, me he's today. been texting him nonstop Should, today. I text him all Should the time. He, what's his name? No, his son. His son. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, who runs AEW? I, I I can show you the text right now. He was he, showing him to me earlier. It's very he, funny. He texted me. He, he's. <laughs> He texted me today, and he goes, Northwestern over Illinois and tailgating? Bullshit. That's a lie from the pits of hell. And uh, please stick the Illini barstool guys on this. They are ruthless. And I said, relax. Relax, man. Relax. It was just, we're just trying to do some sarcasm. And he sends me nothing but pictures. Don't, don't zoom in or anything. Pictures of the Illini tailgate. So he was very hot. Well, you even put them in your contacts. Yeah. He's yeah, my got, friend. You, we're you not in your contacts. Oh, I am. She is. I think I am, too, because you have two jacks. <clears throat> You're not. Oh, I yeah. noticed that today. I when I when no, I want to call cool. you cool. when I want to call you you got to call the whole group. Yeah, it's disgusting. Correct, because I I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Katie Katie has her own too, but Katie doesn't have it for it's this Instagram show. Intern. It's Instagram. She has her own. Yeah. Instagram oh yeah, it's line. cool. No, yeah, whatever. She's Instagram intern. No, I friend. just said whatever. I'm podcast partner. <laughs> podcast co-host. Oh, co-host. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. We're not partners. Um, <laughs> this one. Kansas over Kansas State has got some people upset. I, I honestly, I was gonna put Kansas State, but it was it wasn't contrasting enough, so I dumped it. <laughs> the people the people don't understand reason. how this graphic came about, which is even funnier. And for people who are listening to this now, get to be on the inside. This data complete or compiled by Higher American Institute of Learning, H A I L. Hail State, baby. Hail State, baby. I, oh, as soon as like the th- Jack, Katie, and I were sitting around like, what can we do? And I was like, it's got to be something with hail. And Katie just rattled off Higher American Institute of Learning. Yeah. It's, oh, it started off from this main page. tweet has six hundred seventy-five impressions right now. You know how insane In, that is? Three hours. Six hundred seventy-five thousand. Six hundred seventy-five thousand. Six in, in, in three hours. Yeah, and has, and then it has 115,000 engagements, which is also insane. Over 300 yeah. quote tweets. I, I sent it to all the viceroys, too, in the football chat. Awesome. Like, go Huge. Do, go do your shit. I literally tell them, like, rip it apart. Let's see if we on. have any verified people talking. About well, a lot, Eddie, of, a lot of the viceroys are, are... Yeah, are, but... Okay. It's uh, such... I mean, it's no, such a good troll. I don't troll. know that we've... Uh, oh, Iowa State. Iowa fans are pissed. And I got Iowa fans saying, oh, Brandon Walker did this graphic to fuck with us. I don't know how to do graphics, but... I am very glad Katie did it too. Far well, the, the thing is, is a lot of people think that you did this because of the Mississippi State angle. Yeah. No one thinks I did this because of Texas. So, like, I'm completely in the clear. Oh, I, I want them to think that I, I did this. And initially, I had uh, UConn for Connecticut, too, but Jack's just at Yale. So, the Connecticut and Fordham. Man. Like, I what mean, a, what a great, what a Fordham great being New York may not be that wrong. I've never I mean, heard of a Syracuse. Syrac- I've never heard of a Syracuse football tailgate in What's my life. What's that big lot they have? It's like that frat. It's yeah, like- they party, but they but they go to that lot for just like some stupid party that's like uh, uh, like Cinco de Mayo. I bet there's more Cinco de. There's a bigger party for Cinco de Mayo there tonight well, certainly than after any this football game. Year. After football, after football game, yeah. or compared to a football game, right. Syracuse Arizona is a joke when it comes that. to football. Yeah, but Let's Arizona State, they're a party school, right? Yeah. Well, so is Arizona. Um, an App State in North Carolina. Did you troll your own school? You no, honestly, UNC is not not a big tailgate school because we're, we're the campus is in the middle. The the stadium is middle of campus. So there's nowhere really to go. You have to walk two miles. Marshall over West Virginia is the most egregious. Yeah. The people – yeah, that is true. That is incredibly <laughs> egregious. We've seen West Virginia and how they tailgate. It's crazy. Yeah, they, the people they're, who they're are actually def- – That shit insane. Insane. Naked. They're also mm-hmm. naked. The people that are defending Texas, I'm really curious, like, if they actually went there. Because my friends who went to Texas who are diehard Longhorn fans will say that their tailgating scene is yeah, not like, that they, great. They like tailgating with homeless people. And, I mean, it's the middle of Austin, Texas. It's completely different. So I don't know who's defending it other than just, like, the idiots that just want to say, fuck you to A&M. Go to Lubbock, Texas – and party with people in tech, in at Texas Tech. It's right. incredibly fun. Let's talk some news. Katie, if you'll uh, pull up the news. Uh, not a whole lot, but last week Jack was lamenting the fact that Kansas didn't have a coach. <laughs> I think Kansas hired a very good coach. I think Lance Leipold from uh, Buffalo, who's won at every level, Wisconsin Whitewater, and then he was uh, certainly breaking through at Buffalo, having a couple of winning seasons in a row, maybe three winning seasons in a row, when they really don't have that. Uh, Lance Leipold, Kansas. Probably best case scenario for them, especially it was either Jeff Munkin or him. Uh, I think a lot of people didn't want Jeff Munkin. They wanted him to stay at Army. Mm-hmm. College football fans wanted him to stay at Army. He, he's it has more of the allure there. I guess but you go to Kansas, you just kind of go to be irrelevant. 
You do, but I mean, it's like. I mean, if you if that's your your stepping stone, then fine. But it's. Like, I don't. I I hope it's not a stepping stone. I'll tell you why. Um, he's. I think he's older. I think he's fifty six. Like he's in his fifties, I believe. Um, I hope he goes there, does a great job, stays there, and builds Kansas. No, I'm talking something. about for like Jeff Munkin. Oh, Jeff Munkin. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Like you go there and it's kind of like like you have the allure right now. You're mm-hmm. the army guy. You're the you know Twitter viral the guy. Is hot. Yeah. Yeah. Like you don't. I mean, what? I don't want to go to fucking Kansas. Nothing. I was no just offense. looking at you because you were talking. Um, Ly- Leipold, everywhere he's gone, the yeah. the programs he's gone to usually stink before he gets this there. This is a better hire than, uh, than Wisconsin. Les Miles. He won six national championships at Wisconsin and Whitewater. Mm-hmm. Obviously, yeah. that doesn't really matter. But they stunk before he got there. So he built something there. Then for him. Buffalo it was a problem in the MAC every year when he was there, except for I think year two when they went two and ten. So he could. I don't think. I think Kansas. They're not a sleeping giant per se, but they are a team that could be like uh, that could become a factor in the Big Twelve week to week. Like it won't just be like, oh, we're playing Kansas. It's like, oh, you have to play them. All right. So a little bit more news. Last week was the NFL draft, and speaking from a college football perspective. This is my number one take. I I need Nick Saban to retire. I need him to go away. <laughs> uh, NFL draft That's fans incredible. are now uh, NFL fans. Every year at the draft, you can see how big of a grip they have on the on college football because you can win games, you can win national titles, and that says you're a good program. You could, but when you're when you're consistently out producing, like. Ohio State and Clemson are elite programs, and they are right there with Alabama on the field. But when it comes to producing NFL talent and producing and getting guys to the next level, which helps you get the the guys from high school to come to your school, Alabama's just lapping the field. Like they they had more drafted at one point in the first round. They had it was pick twenty four Najee Harris, pick twenty four. There were six Alabama players off the board. That's twenty five percent of the first round at that point Insanity. was Alabama. And the, the numbers are crazy. Their 2017 recruiting class, which was number one in the country, I hope so, uh, ended up producing eight first-round picks, two of them quarterbacks, four of them receivers. Like, it's ridiculous. That, that might, it has to be the greatest recruiting class of all time when you, when you weigh out NFL, their NFL potential and what, what they did to the draft. Especially when you look at – I mean, I know you, it's like Dion said on the NFL show to you guys, like you can't look at a draft class and really give it a grade for three years. But if you look at just where these kids were drafted, you can absolutely say it's the best recruiting class in history. And one more thing. I mean, look at this. Yeah, we put up this graphic Alabama, on Instagram. Alabama, over the last five years. And five years is what you have on your roster at all times. you got redshirt seniors, seniors down to freshmen. So that's five years worth of players, right? Over the last five years, they've had 51 players drafted. An NFL roster is 53. They've had an NFL roster drafted. It's also, fucking crazy. the 2018 Bama team that lost, it came really came down to their defense. But this team Look was unbelievable. This. Had Jalen Hurd, had th- potentially, no, it didn't potentially. It had three starting quarterbacks. Yes, right NFL. now. Yeah, yeah. Three yes. NFL starting quarterbacks. They'll put, they'll, there will be a week, oh, a Sunday this this season where there will be three Alabama I completely agree. Yeah, because Mac Jones is – I think he'll start a game this year. Jalen Hurts we know is going to be their starting quarterback, and two is the Dolphins' starting quarterback. And then you have the receivers, uh, Judy, Smith, Ruggs, and Waddle. I mean – It's crazy. It's unbelievable. Well, and I mean, the fact that you have Bill Belichick drafting a quarterback in the first round is, first of all, just insanity in, its, in and of itself. Remember when Alabama had a quarterback problem? Yeah, when they had an offense problem. Yeah. They had an offense problem. And this team, of their 13 first-round draft picks, like 11 of them or are offensive. offense. Yeah, no, Alabama's transition from uh, grinded out three yards in a cloud of dust, but we're going to knock your dick in the dirt on defense, to, you know what, defense will be fine. We're going to outscore you and we're going to stretch the field and we're going to make it a track meet every – that, like, I don't think we talk about it enough. No, we don't. Nick Saban completely changed the way they play football. By recruiting, uh, just and they still gets the five star defensive players, but the offensive players are changing their team more than the defensive players. Well, and if you notice too, especially you know for the, through the first three rounds of this draft, so many more offensive players were taken than it's an like, offensive game, though. right? I mean, it was like everyone needed offensive firepower, and I think I don't remember exactly what the stat was, but like the first three rounds had more offensive players taken than in like a forever long not just offensive but skill players skill players yes Mm -hmm. i mean it's just absolutely insane how many teams went for skill players and the fact that nick saban is still turning out the highest amount of draft picks it's like of course he is yeah no they are the they are the 
model for how recruiting rankings are supposed to work. You get the best players, you develop them into the stars, you send them to the NFL, you win national championships. If every team were Alabama, of course, that's where I, I find fault with recruiting rankings because I feel like sometimes recruiting rankings tell certain programs they're going to be Alabama or they're going to be Clemson, and it just doesn't work that mm -mm. way. But Alabama is proof. If you ever want to say recruiting rankings work, Alabama is 100% proof that that is, in fact, true. Look at my hair. You know who's been looking at your hair is my sister. I know. I know. I know. She, she loves said, it. That was one of the things she pointed out. My I hair know. looked good. I know. Well, thanks to Erica Fleischman for We're having – We need to tell Erica that your sister's hot after me because of my hair. Well, she's not hot after you, but she does love your hairstyle. Well, that wasn't her that DM'd me? She didn't DM you. Yeah, she DM'd a, me. That was a dude anyway. Yeah, no, but um, the glow up is real, and it's yeah. so real that my my sister, who is mm -hmm. dating an, another one of our coworkers, noticed yeah. it. She doesn't have good taste in men, but uh, <laughs> yes, but I got the, I have good taste in haircuts. I go to Fleischmann's. Mm -hmm. It is wonderful. Not only do they give me this great haircut, they also have hair products for everybody. They got the paste. They got the the sea salt water spray that you love. Yeah, you brought me an extra bottle. I haven't brought it to you yet. Yeah. Well, but I did. you you said yeah. that you brought one home. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love it. They they are a salon for men. But the products girls can use, too. The hair vitamins, yeah. those gummies, they taste amazing. They taste like candy. I take one of those every day. Pop it in when I'm taking my other supplements. You just like taking stuff. I don't know where this is going. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something way worse. Fle Fleischmann's has, <laughs> Fleischmann's has uh, wonderful hair products. It's great. You can uh, check it out. If you want to look just like me, you can. Uh, you probably look better than me because my hair is, you know, it's getting there. It's a work in progress. No, your hair looks fantastic. And, I, yeah. and people forget that you... Used to Started look like out looking could, like a four-year-old boy. Well, as John Feidelberg said, who also is a Fleischman person, right. uh, said that it looked like you used to cut your hair with a fork and knife. I don't care what he says. Well, you did, though. I mean, you can look at it now and say that. He's, mm. he's a Fleischman guy. Your hair looks fantastic now. His hair looks like he's a, a, like a, a British admiral on a safari in 1840. It looks great because Fleischman does it. Stupid face. Well, you just don't like him. I like him. What fine. did you call him? Like a... Uh, lesbian, uh, uh, lesbian pineapple, lesbian cantaloupe. Like his hair was, yeah, it was, it was something. Yeah, no, but uh, again, shout out Fleischman. She's, shout out Fleischman. She's made you look fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, well, her, I, I do love her products. She's just they helped. smell amazing. I like the sea salt spray too. Yeah, we love the sea salt and spray. The so you know, if you go to FleischmannSalon.com right now and you use, you know what the promo code is. Is it Walker? It's Walker. Really? Yeah. Well, you get, my hair. You get 20% off all Fleischmann Salon products, and if you order one of the bundles, which conveniently has everything you need, you'll get an extra 15% off. Brandon, what's 20 plus 15? 35. So you'll get 35% off mm -hmm. of a Fleischmann bundle. If you go to Fleischmann, that's F-L-E-I-S-C-H-M-A-N salon.com. And again, it's not just for men. It's for women, too. Go get it. And if you're in New York, check her out. Check her salon out. Why not? Mm-hmm. I have a question about Zach Wilson. Okay. Um, obviously, we watched him play last year. Mm -hmm. Did did we ever realize exactly how young he looked? He's a twelve year old boy. I guess I never saw him without a helmet. Yeah. I may, or maybe if I did, it was like in his full like uniform he was and shoulder also pads. Also surrounded by other Mormon boys at the time. He looks twelve years old. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. He's going out on the town. Twelve year old millionaire. I mean, he he. I feel like New York's going to eat him alive. He'll live in New not. Jersey. He'll live in New Jersey. It won't matter. No, I'm talking about the media. I don't think he'll care. Really? He'll care. Why wouldn't he care? Is he human? Oh, it's because your Mormons can't read, Dick. I remember that. <laughs> what? I've, I've he, well, well he, also said, he also said that he's not, like, he doesn't want to be a poster boy for the Church of no, he's not. Latter-day he's Saints. A he's a fake Mormon, I've heard. He's not a Mormon? Well, well he's he Mormon. Is, but he's, he's like kind of he like... He said he didn't fuck? grow up if in the church. I, fuck? That's what I think If he, that's I, what I think said I was like a hardcore Christian, you'd be like, what are you talking about? I've never... Like, you're here all Sunday. You don't go to church. But the, thing, the difference, though, with the Mormon religion is like they can't drink caffeine. Like, they have like yeah. super strict rules. I've heard the church that he went to in California is like for fake Mormons, quote unquote. Soaking sounds miserable. I don't what think is that's a real soaking? thing. What don't, is that? No, oh, please, please don't no. explain. Well, I think it is a real thing. I I it can it be a real is, thing. It cannot be a real thing. Soaking so, Mormons. Oh my God, Jack. Jack, that's where you. Jack, you'll see. You'll see. I mean, who? Roan did, did a. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yes, no, Ro Jack, no, that's not a thing. Jack, Roan did it. Roan did no. Roan did a whole concussion protocol on it. On it, okay. Like you did it. No, Roan went out there and soaked. <laughs> he went out there for the college football show for for a video, and I, it was. I mean, hands on reporting. I don't think he used his hands. I don't like it. <laughs> also, okay, so no also, my my mom did not enjoy that segment whatsoever. My dad had to fast forward it through Which the college one? football show. Oh, the soaking. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I warned him. Not a whole lot to talk about. Now, Kadarius Tony, who I loved from Florida, went higher than I thought. Uh, but the draft is a draft. Those guys are pro football players now. Yeah, they are. And now we uh, – in fact, you know what? Katie, yeah. you fire me up a 2022 mock draft. Stephen Che has one up, right? Don't – don't. Did you? Did you roll your eyes? No. I don't think I did. I, I apologize did. if I did. I, I swear I didn't mean to. Okay. All right. I love Mac Jones in a Patriots Because this is – 20 uh, – can I say something? Do you want to do CBS 24-7? I don't think Mac Jones is going to be worth a shit in New England. And uh, who do you think will be better? Wait, Mac you're, Jones or Zach? you're there's what? some guys in the first round of the 2022 and mock NFL draft, yeah, that you're going to scoff at. Okay, good. I'm gonna scoff. All right, all right, stop right there. Um, the I don't think Mac Jones is gonna be great, and, and he, he had the benefit of uh, the best running back, best receiver. I've said all this, best offensive line. And Patriots fans act like, oh, we got a steal at 15, we got this. The only team in the top three or five that was linked to him was 49ers. It was only one team. The only two teams that thought he was a first – like he was a mid-first or late-first rounder, and the Patriots acting like they got a steal because the Niners were giving a smoke screen about him. They were never going to pick him. They might have been. It is interesting that – you know you know the three quarterbacks New England goes in the season with? Cam Newton. Mm-hmm. Auburn. Mac Jones. Alabama. And who's their third? Jared Stidham. Oh, Jared Stidham's there. Auburn, That's right. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about so Jared Stidham. They're going full SEC. Remember full, when, it, full when everybody ball. thought Jared Stidham was going to be Tom Brady's heir? Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, that crazy. didn't last. Yes. Unbelievable. And even when they put they him in 14, last year. Nothing. Like, there were 14 There were 14 point favorites, and they were cruising, and they put him in like an idiot. He throws a pick six first play, blows the cover. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I, and. Auburn that? fans, yeah, because Jamal Adams picked it off. Chirping yeah. at me when I said that he wasn't going to be worth a shit in New England, and they went back and found old takes of mine where he was good at Auburn. I was like, that doesn't mean he's going to be. A this is a college. Shit. So, so this is a college subject right here. Twenty twenty two NFL draft yeah. uh, uh, first round mock. So let's just go play, player by player and say okay or no. Just if you if you agree, fine. Uh, number one pick, Kayvon Thibodeau, defensive end, Oregon. Now this was like a nine star recruit. Uh, that He's went so to big. Oregon. He's very, very good. Yeah, I can see him being the number one pick. He's huge. Number two, Sam Howell, North Carolina. I can see that as well. I think Sam yeah. Howell's very good. He's got an NFL arm. I think he will be, at, at minimum, a top five pick. It also depends on what Jared Goff does this year. Third pick, Derek Stingley Jr., LSU. I say no. You don't think he's Derek a- Stingley was elite as a freshman. He was just okay as a sophomore. He wasn't great. We I talk think about he kind of wanted to opt out, but – he he wasn't like that defense. Yeah, but I think it was just like a sophomore slump. Uh, maybe he, he's one of those guys that I feel like you just he's been on the radar, but also like he, I think he's the best defensive player going like in he this, didn't, this I know, season. I know he didn't play. Kayvon Thibodeau. He didn't. Oh, pl- he didn't well, play against yeah. Mississippi State. I remember the first couple of weeks he didn't he play. He didn't. Yeah. And then when he came in, he just he wasn't great. All right, so number four, Kyle Hamilton, Notre Dame. I'm not going to try to front. I don't I really know, yeah, know a lot about his game. I I, I've seen Notre Dame play. Yeah. Their defense has been very, very good, very fast. Uh, so if they think that, 6'4", 219, I don't think a safety is getting picked number four. Evan Neal, Alabama. Um, is right it, now the, the Eagles have that pick, and they Eagles. do need offensive line yeah, help. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry about the teams because they're just guessing. But Darren Kendrick right. Clemson, Clemson, he's good. He's great. And he's been in trouble. Who, Darren Kendrick? Yeah, or is the other He one? just left Clemson. He's yeah. in the transfer portal. Right. Mm-hmm. Darren Kendrick. Um, Zion Nelson, offensive line Miami. Nope. Not going to front here. Again, I don't really know a lot about Zion what, Nelson. Offensive lineman, I'm just not, not going to know a lot about until I watch him this year. Uh, Number Spencer eight, Rattler. Spencer Rattler. He's t- he, eight. He is not 6'1", 205. Nope. That's bullshit. I tweeted that once, and his high school coach tweeted at me saying, oh, yeah, I'm six man. feet tall, and he's taller than me. Well, his high school coach then is saying he's six I, foot tall. His high school coach is 5'4". It was just a funny – it was just a funny – it was a funny. His high school coach, Dave Portnoy? <laughs> uh, Uncalled number for. nine, Keaton Slovis. Okay. Yeah. This is a guy. I can't figure out if he wants to be good or bad or just not there. It feels like he's been there 28 years. He has been there 28 years. We've just years. been talking about Keaton Slovis every year. Yeah. And then there was that one year, I guess it was when we were in Madison two years ago, uh, that year – he was the third. He was the third, but they kept every time they kept bringing out a quarterback, they get further st- into the depth chart, and they just find a better quarterback. Yeah, it was it started with JT, and then I can't re- remember who the middle one was, um, yeah. and then and then Keaton like Slope. Spencer Johnson or something. No, I don't think it was, so. It was he had a fun. Was, there was an I in his name. I know that. Who was that? Ah, uh, don't remember. We were sitting in that bar, yeah. that Dan's college bar. Yeah, uh, Malik Willis, Liberty. 
who was once an Auburn. Matt Fink. Matt Fink. Matt I knew Fink. there was an I in his name. Uh, Malik Willett, no. You can't have a starting quarterback named Matt Fink. I don't think a Hugh Freeze quarterback's going in the top ten. That's crazy. Drake Jackson, USC. Uh, George uh, Kolaftis from Purdue. I think he is good. Chris Olave. That's a good pick. Chris Olave, who was outstanding at Ohio State. I can't believe he didn't go into the draft this year. He could have. He stayed. Yeah, he, he could have. Ohio State receiver is going to be unbelievable the big, this year. They had a D lineman. I think that was their bigger surprise day. Isaiah Spiller, Texas first running A&M. back off the board. You know what's crazy about Isaiah Spiller? He's very good. I'm not sure he starts all year for them. Who was that guy y'all unleashed in the ball game? Remember him? Oh shit! You know what I'm talking about? I mean, that like it was a guy. Yes. Yeah. Who the fuck was that? Right. You guys unleashed a guy in the ball game against North Carolina. Oh my that god. They had the winning. Yes. You remember the yes. touchdown? Why can I not think of his name right now? It's a very. I hate when it's something obvious like this, and you. It just. It's as soon as you hear it, you're like, duh. But what was his name? A, a chain, a, a, ch- a chain, a chain, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Had 140 yes. yards on 12 carries, like like uh, as good as Spiller's All gonna I be for think you in guys. My you guys head gonna have the best. I think Travion Williams and he's not. not I think been there A&M's gonna have the best two running backs in the country. They're gonna be the North Carolina this year. I like that take. I lo- a chain <laughs> is great, and so is Isaiah Spiller. And they're gonna have a young quarterback, so they're gonna need to run the ball more. Who's gonna win that job? I think King. You think Haynes King's gonna yeah, win that job? I do. It feels like that Calzada kid's been there forever. Yeah, but Pete, there's so much hype around Haynes King. Uh, let's just see. Uh, just keep, scroll down, and when I see something interesting, Cade Mays, the guy who who <laughs> who took who went to Georgia, and then and then a Tennessee fans basically burned his house down, told him he was an asshole and a uh-huh. traitor, and then immediately ran back to Tennessee. Yep. I don't his want dad lost a finger. At dad Georgia. lost a finger. Made up a story about losing a finger. He lost a finger. I don't want that kid anywhere near my team. Uh, John Mechie uh, from Alabama, the next just to grow receiver. Another wide receiver. Uh, Zach Harrison, I think he'll end up going higher from Ohio State. Trayvon Burks. Traylon Burks from Arkansas. Here's something we didn't talk about a couple weeks ago. What? Oklahoma just took a receiver from Alabama from Arkansas. Yeah. They just watched the spring game, and they took a receiver, Mike Woods, I believe. Yeah, and Arkansas tweeted out Arkansas a picture tweet- of Mike Woods two days before he transferred, like, defenses, the defenses were worst but nightmares then they, anyway. But didn't they tweet something out? Didn't Arkansas – some main Arkansas account tweeted out something butthurt about it afterwards. Oh, I didn't know Oh, that. I'm sure they yeah. were. Because, I mean, basically they just said, you know what, I like you. Come play for That's us. That's exactly what they did. They just plucked him right off the roster. Look at this. Look at this. This is just a mock draft. Alabama. 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 Unbelievable. You can go all the way down if I see anybody that's interesting. Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati, first-round pick. What? I don't no think so. No chance. I don't think so. No, no. offense. Jalen Weidermeyer from Ty- Texas A&M. I love that guy. I think he's he'll so, go higher than that. Didn't he just absolutely You know who's not on here that should be on here, Brandon? Who? Your boy. I have a lot of boys. Can I just point something out? Who's, no, no, who's? Charles Cross? Yeah. A tackle from Mississippi State? Yeah, most yeah. most most have Charles yeah. Cross as a top ten pick. There's another guy right there, Justin Ross, Clemson. Justin Ross has been there 26 years. Well, he had the he issue hurt. last yeah. year. Yeah. He had like He's something with his uh, – He's the spine. one that made the crazy catch in the national title game yes. against Alabama, right? Because he's from Alabama. Yes. He is from Alabama. Oh, yeah. that, that neck injury he had, it looked really you bad. Guys, I was That's what I was about to say. first round picks. In DeMarvin Leal. He's good. Yeah, the f- I, that's what I'm about to say. The fact that I'm a mock you, draft a and having three first-round picks is crazy. I'm saying it. Crazy she, good. I'm, I'm saying it. She doesn't have to say it. I've said it. I'm telling you right now, if A&M finds the right quarterback, they're a national title contender. No. Yeah. I yes. think they are. Their no. defense, based off of what, Jack? They've been building no. their defense for a while, and they're going to have a running game. They're going to have everything but a quarterback. I think they're like – A year away? No. I think we're going to – Paper champs? I think they're like 11 or 12th best team. A great quarterback would change it, though. Yeah, I mean – if they have an average quarterback, sure. But if they're, I, it, why would they be worse than they were last year? I think Kellen I think Mon Kellen was, Mon was, was really better important. than we. Oh, no, I mean Kellen Mond was incredibly important, and he had, you know, he put up historical numbers. But it's not when you watch those games, it wasn't like holy shit, Kellen Mond is changing everything. I haven't even gotten it. We got to hurry. Yeah. Intro to hate Mond. Well, you just we just did a whole oh, thing. Oh, by, by the way, we'll, we'll we didn't points. see this in the mock no, draft, no. but in Walter Football's mock draft, they have Tyler Shue, Shaw from Sh- Texas Sh- Tech Sh- now. Who literally Shuff. Oregon? Our boy Joe Moore had told to get, mm-hmm. get going, get going to yep. Texas Tech as their number one pick. Told him to duck on out of town. Literally. Mm-hmm. So I, that's the one that I was talking about when we were talking about. You'd be shocked. 
I got a box of goodness in my house last week. From HelloFresh? From HelloFresh. We're just sitting there. We're wondering what to do for dinner. Actually, I wasn't there. My wife texted me and said, Hello Fresh box. She sent me a picture of the HelloFresh, and I knew we had the next four or five dinners planned. I've said this once. I've said it ten times. I'm going to say it again. It is one of the only advertising deals that I actually pay for. It's not like they're just they're paying me to do it. No, I pay for HelloFresh because I absolutely love it, and I've, I've been doing this new tricky thing, but it works. So I have this great new apartment. Is this not getting drunk every night? Well, I can also get drunk while I'm doing this because it's okay, so easy to make enough. food. You yes. know, I can drink all the wine I want because they, they give you the ingredients and the directions just pl planned out. But I have this great new apartment that's great for hosting dinner parties. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing is using HelloFresh because their meals are unbelievable. But I do it before everyone gets over and I pretend like I'm doing it from scratch. Oh, so people think so you I'm, lie to your people. People think I'm this like, incredible chef. But right. It's like, no, HelloFresh makes it so easy and mm. the food is so delicious. Yeah. That they think I'm that good of a cook when really not. I'm they not. Think you're healthy too because the ingredients are all fresh. All fr all I mean, it's like I, everything comes perfectly packaged, perfectly fresh, and it is literally step by step. So even an idiot like me can do it. I love when I got home and I, I looked at the I, I saw my wife's box and it was just wonderful. Yeah, and you don't have to go to the store. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't. There's a giggle. You don't happening. have to go to the store. You can uh, <laughs> cut out. You can cut out the uh, the store trips, the stress well, of grocery shopping. But also, just like if you need like a tiny little thing of soy sauce for your stir fry, mm -hmm. you don't want to buy a whole fucking bottle. No. HelloFresh takes care of it. And, and there's the stress of meal planning. Y you don't have to. Like, what are you? What am I going to make tonight? What am I going to eat? You know what else is really cool that people don't realize that you can do? You select your items the week before so you can yeah. go on they have a ton of different options you can select your menu so yeah, if you're feeling super box, healthy a meat box, yeah. yeah if you feel like some if it's colder outside you want some more colder weather food you can do whatever again hellofresh is one of the only things i actually pay for in my life you should go right now to hellofresh.com slash walker walker 12 and use the promo code walker 12 and you get 12 free meals including free shipping that that's is a absurd. lot of meals that's a great deal it's a great deal again that's hellofresh.com slash walker 12 you get 12 free meals and it includes free shipping uh, it's america's number one meal kit absolutely delicious i do three meals a week unbelievable you can trick your friends too here's what i want to talk about hate month at the the, the last show of the month it's going to be our hate extravaganza. Oh, I can't wait. We're going to hate on everybody. We'll allow you guys to hate on everybody. You remember how we ended the last episode, last hate episode, with me just going after cowbells? Mm, yes, correct. Mm, that was the first time I wanted to suspend you from the podcast. Yeah. But not the last. Definitely not the last. Even second to last. Um, <laughs> so there's a couple things that I hate. And this, this week it's going to be – that I'm hating on. I'm not hating on teams. Nope. I'm not hating on players. We're saving that. I'm not hating on coaches. Mm -hmm. I'm not hating on programs that, uh, you know, turn the other cheek or steal from children's hospitals to get recruits. I'm not hating on any of that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm hating it's on tabled. concepts. I'm so in. I'm hating this. on ideas. I'm hating on these schools of thought that exist in college football fans on Twitter and really in real life that are just stupid. And across the board, every single fan base has them. Every single – School of thought that we are about to go over, every fan base possesses. Here's an idea that exists in college football that needs to be gotten rid of. And I'm going to use Iowa State as the picture, as the model of this okay. idea. I'm going to use Iowa State as because the example. they represent something this year that is sorely needed in college football. They represent something I believe in. And they represent something that is – it happens often, but it's never the same team usually. So Iowa State is the representative for this this year. But this summer, Iowa State will be ranked in every preseason top ten. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they bring back Brock Purdy. They bring back Brees Hall. They have Matt Campbell. They bring back a ton of starters. They're going to be a very, very good team that played for the Big 12 championship and won the Fiesta Bowl last year, right? Check on that. I think they won the Fiesta Bowl. They, they, they beat did. Oregon. Yeah, they yeah. beat Oregon in the Fiesta Bowl. So Iowa State brings back everything you need to be a top ten team. But every time a preseason top ten, whether it's CBS, ESPN, Barstool, goes out this summer on Twitter, the, all the replies, most of the replies will be, Iowa State, what have they ever won? Iowa State, that's not a top ten program. Iowa State, they don't belong up there. Wait till they win something. No. This idea that you have to be a blue blood and you have to have had success to, to belong in the top ten or to get there, that you can't crash the party, that you can't break through, that you can't hire the right guy and build the program the right way, is bullshit. The, the idea that Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, who run college football right now, should completely own it and never give it up and, and never 
never cede it to anybody, and nobody can ever get to that level, if that idea were to take hold, then Clemson never would have gotten to this level anyway because Clemson had to crash the party. Mm -hmm. Clemson, who has a past. Clemsoning was a thing not that long ago. They had to recrash the party. Iowa State hired the right coach. Iowa State recruited the right players. Iowa State is doing the right thing. They're building a program. Iowa State is a bona fide contender this year. They're a Big 12 title contender. They're a playoff contender. They deserve it. That fan base deserves it. And I don't care that they've never won much. I don't care what happened before World War II. I don't care what happened before integration. Right now in 2021, Iowa State's a damn good football program. And if you just say, what have they ever won? They don't belong up there. Then you're being an idiot, and you got to stop being an idiot in college football. Iowa State deserves respect. The quote – what have they ever won or they've never won shit is the weakest argument because mm-hmm. it's like, I don't care about what's happened in the past. I'm saying that this team is going to wreak havoc in their conference or potentially nationally this year. It has nothing to do if they won in 19 fucking 55. Who cares? We're talking about current. So anybody who's like, oh, they ain't won shit before. Okay. Well, I think they're going to win this year. Get rid of that school of thought. Here's something I, and I use Iowa State as the representative. They are this year's. Uh, darling, they, are, they, they have earned it. Uh, but it could be – it was us in 2014. Uh, it's been other teams, um, Coastal Carolina probably last year. Uh, there's a lot of teams that, that fit this mold. But Iowa State, I think, is a legit program and deserves a, a ton of respect. Um, one other thing, a couple things I hate. If you are online, if you live online and you live in your college football universe and you ever find yourself tweeting out the words, little brother – to someone who isn't, in fact, your biological little brother. You need to get psychiatrically tested or just hit yourself in the face with a goddamn brick <laughs> because little brother doesn't exist. Little, little brother, when, 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 when I pose an argument to you, Casey, and I say, you know what, I think uh, Iowa State's going to be a good football program. Oh, I'd expect that from little brother. That's the dumbest thing rivals say. There is no little brother. This is college football. There are five power conferences. Every team in that power conference is a big brother, I promise you. Little brother is was one of the stupidest things rivals say to each other. I agree with that. And, I, and I'm not – I mean, this coming isn't from coming, somebody that was called that my entire this life. This isn't coming from me with my beef with that because Ole Miss fans say it, fine, whatever. I, I get more fr- – I don't get frustrated when Ole Miss fans say it. I get more frustrated when I say um, – I put out a college football tweet – and then, like, uh, let's say a South Carolina fan responds, and then Clemson says, oh, good take, little brother. Shut up. Shut I mean, it's just stupid. Michigan State, Michigan, you see Michigan, that a lot. You see that a lot. Uh, little brother's just a played out fucking thing. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, no, I don't like it because it's just, like, it's supposed to be demeaning, but it just doesn't make any sense anymore. And, and Oklahoma State, Oklahoma fans do it. It's, it's really just, a, again, it's a weak, lazy argument for your rival. Um, one of, like tying into that, one of the things I hate the most, and we've talked about this a million times, and it's not just AM or not just Mississippi State. Anytime you're arguing with somebody on Twitter and your immediate default is, well, look where you went to school, yeah. you see it all the time. Somebody will stand up for like Notre Dame and like, oh, coming from like a fucking Rutgers fan or whatever right. it may be. It's like, stop using that. You can argue the sport without having to be arguing your team. I absolutely cannot stand when people do that. It's like, I didn't say shit about that school. I don't, I'm not talking about my school. I'm talking about the current school. Like, stop doing that, too. That's lazy. I'm going to pull Clemson on the carpet. Clemson fans, you act like you've been a dynasty for the last 200 years. You act like you guys invented college football. Remember earlier when he said that he wasn't Wait, going to talk about specific schools? I was pulling this up because like, my thought was like to, to butt back. was like, <laughs> well, what are you talking about Clemson fans, South Carolina? And, yeah, the – the streak is not that long. It's 2014. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. um, and, and South Carolina had a streak before that. It, it always go back and forth with rivals. But Clemson, Clemson fans, you have a great program. Well, you have a great coach. You have an elite coach. You have probably the best coach in the country. Uh, him yeah. and Saban, 1A, one, one 1B. One he's behind Saban a little bit. But when Saban retires, he's the best coach in the country. There's not a close third. I don't think there's – no, because Ryan Day's not there and Lincoln Riley's not there. Well, Lincoln Jimbo Riley's Fisher's not, even, not either. Lincoln Riley's top five. But I, I just believe that Clemson acts like they have ascended to the throne and they've been sitting on the throne since, like, Queen Elizabeth got her throne. It's just, it's just not – you guys act like you, you guys – college football was invented for you guys. Have some humbleness. Clemson was a thing five years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. I was just say it's probably five. Soon. I think it's probably five. Uh, 2016, 2016 was their first one, yeah. Yeah. So, it's oh, not. so what year is it? Oh, it's so about six years ago it's now. It's 2021. Well, yeah. no, 16 is No, 2015 was their first one. That's right, 16 was Deshaun. No, 
No. No. 16 was their first. Are you saying Natty or? Natty. Oh, Natty. I thought you were saying college football playoff. No, no 16. 16 they won. Uh, the, with the Deshaun. Deshaun. And then yes. they won the blowout with Trevor. But 2015 was the last Clemsoning thing. I mean, I was definitely tweeting about Clemsoning, and I was not tweeting 15 Well, years no, ago. 15, I, I would say it was 15, earlier. 15, they were good. They almost 15, beat Bama. Remember, remember, Bama, it was the onside kick national yes. title game. So they, they were nothing to be ashamed of. Right, there. no. But 2014, they were still Clemsoning. It feels like it was a lot sooner than that, but it's not. That's the point of what you just said, 16, though. 16, 18, not 15. I, I know. Okay. Yeah. yeah, 15, they lost to Bama. Yeah. Yeah. Onside kick game. That was a good game. What was the what was the t- tight end's name from Bama that had a oh OJ Howard? I'm so surprised he wasn't as good in uh, yeah because I did so I, good I, in college. I, the, the first viral thing I ever tweeted I was the first guy to put it out so I got lucky but I had the this was him running down the sidelines and it was just the OJ Bronco chase it was my first viral tweet I think oh. in 2016. Um, what else do we hate? It's awesome. I, I'm going to ask the Roughnecks right now. Oh, you know what I hate? Can good. I hate something else, too? Oh, uh, yeah. It's not going to be racial, is it? No. Oh, my okay. God. Brandon. Well, you know how you are. No. What? Stop it. Okay. Um, I hate, and we talked a little bit about this last week, and you just alluded to it, I hate when college football fans who are around my age or even a couple decades older bring up wins in the fucking 30s, 40s, 50s, even the 60s. And yes, this is coming from a fan who hasn't won a national title since 1939. I do not give a fuck what happened 100 years ago. I don't care. Arkansas fans did this when they were arguing with me about like the A&M Arkansas series. Like I don't care what happened. I understand games matter in history. To me, they matter when I'm alive. Yeah. Like, listening to my dad talk about games that he watched is really cool. I don't care what happened then because I didn't get to see it. I don't care what happened before last year. I mean, it's it, to me, it's like I, I don't care, and I understand if I won a national title in my lifetime, I would feel differently. But it's like I care about what's happening right now. I care about what's happened since I was conceived and born, okay? Mm-hmm. All right. I have one thing. I'm looking at my camera. Hey, college football fans – you need to stop with the xenophobia, all right? Just because I'm from the north doesn't mean that I can't give you a college football take, all right? Your stadium's quieter than Rensselaer Field, RG3 told me, okay? So I'm looking at you right now which, into the camera. You stink. That's what I hate about you. Stop being xenophobic, okay? All right? There we go. Now we can go on to the rough match. Jack, see, here, here's the thing. I would back you up on that. Until you started saying that Rensselaer Field is louder just because RG3 said it. But I do think that you have a bone to pick with the idea that people say you don't know college football just because you were born in the Northeast. When did RG3 become the arbiter of That's what I'm trying to say. You didn't know shit. What? He's played. Here's. Do you know when he became the arbiter? When he played in the North and the South. That's when he became an arbiter. He played in Texas. That's not the South. Texas is Texas. Oh, yeah? Then where where does Texas A&M play? Texas. SEC. They do play in the SEC, yeah. But Texas is not the South. Only somebody from the Northeast. Texas, Texas is Texas. The South. Yeah. No, nah, Texas is not in a region. And listen, Texas I, is I'm, its own region. I'm incredibly glad that I live on the East Coast now. You're telling me RG3 but never played in the South? Who? RG3. He played in the South. He played in Southern stadiums, Midwestern stadiums, Northeast stadiums. Okay. And right. the loudest one? UConn's pretty. They're the prettiest girl at the ball. Okay? UConn's great. Or in Slayer Field. Mm-hmm. I don't know why we're taking RG3. I said, welcome to Hate Month. As a lover of college football, what's one thing you hate about it? So this is people, we all love college football. Just give me what one thing that you don't like about Can it. Can we go around the room before you get to Twitter on that? Because I, I think I don't, I'm not prepared, but go ahead. No, I. the one thing I hate about it is that every fan base is delusional, but no one will admit it. Correct. Like Although I, you could like, probably expand that all the way to sports. Well, but. sports in general, but like I, you know, the like spelling Aggie wrong with a Y. It's the same thing at A and M when they refuse to say U T. They say T U. It's like it's equally is delusional. Why do y'all call them the T sips? Because uh, they like they sip tea at their tailgates. That's not a great nickname. It's a whole history thing. We don't. Mm. This is not an A and M podcast. I'll give you a thing. But the T U thing is because. Texas is the University of Texas mm-hmm. is, is their actual name. Yeah. And it's like, well, we want to call them Texas University lowercase. It's like, no, that's not their name. Just like no, Aggie honest, is spelled A G G I E. And like they think it's an insult. They think it's an insult when they're like A G G Y. It's like it's not how it's fucking spelled. We got the worst rivalry. We actually need to break this down. It's I mean, we should. We should break down the lamest rivalries. Eight week next, one of the lists next week. And we have to listen to the group chat to Katie and myself when we when we suggest something and say you got to bring this, I know we're not the biggest planners, but we got to plan a little bit. That was a 
directed at you, Brandon. Yeah, but you started saying you, you didn't say anything right there. I'm about to say He's one of the things we're to gonna to bring. It. Okay. Next week is worst rivalries or what weirdest? Lamest rivalries is good. Lamest weirdest. or not lamest rivalries. Lame lamest. I can't even say that word. Rivalry. Things that people do in rivalries. Okay. All right. Uh, so I like said, xing out all the M's. You know, 2020 was an uphill battle. Sure was. 2021 has been a little bit of an uphill battle. Hopefully, it's starting to be downhill yeah, soon. Yeah, we're coming out a little bit. You know what else is an uphill battle? Mm -hmm. Paying off debt. Very uphill battle. And that never Signally feels like it's going to. Never ending. Never ending. It never feels like it's going to go downhill. But our friends at Upstart, they can help you. Because mm -hmm. if you're carrying a credit card balance month to month, it's just adding that extra interest. You don't want that. You no. want to go ahead and pay it off. You want a clean slate. And Upstart is a fast and easy way to do so. Really? Oh, yeah. All you have to do, Brandon. You can go online, and they can do a five-minute rate check. Five minutes. Five minutes. That's all it takes. Mm -hmm. You know, your debt can last forever. Upstart it only takes five minutes. They look at your credit score, your income, your employment history, and they can offer smarter rates with trusted partners. And, again, only five-minute online rate check. You can see your rates up front for loans in between $1,000 and $50,000. Pretty $50, good. $50,000 is a lot of money. Yeah, 1000 is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be in any debt. Zero is the only debt you want to be in. I enjoy zero debt. And you can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today, Brandon Walker. You go to upstart.com slash... Walker? Roughness. Oh, roughness. Upstart.com slash roughness. It's R-O-U-G-H-N-E-S-S. -S. Do not forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. Again, loan amounts will be determined based on your credit and income and certain other information provided on your loan application. That's upstart.com slash roughness. Start over. Get rid of that credit card debt. Mm -hmm. Let Upstart help you. Again, upstart.com slash roughness. Stupid. What do you Dumb. hate about college yes. football? Jeb Caffey says neutral site openers. They don't bother me. Uh, Lester, hey, ba Lester A. Bear says overtime in a football game. That's – are you 90? Overtime is very I think maybe very he's, he's saying that oh, the way they do overtime, he's, hopefully. He basically says over – he says overtime in a football oh, game. Okay, well, that's stupid. We uh, always love free Michael football. Michael Gould but says Gary Danielson. Point for Michael Gould. <laughs> I'm going to keep track of how many <laughs> we points we get. It. How many points. That's a point. Uh, Big Screaming Honkers, number one fan. <laughs> The same thing that makes each game so vital. The fact that one bad game, or not even a bad one, but one where you had a bad possession or two, can keep you from the championship. What makes each game fun, especially the big ones, also causes massive, is it Ajita? Ajita? And likely an early death. What? Ajita? I don't it, know what that is. Does he mean angina? I don't know what that is. Mangina? Not mangina. Oh. What does that mean? Bobby Geiskin says. Have you never seen one? No, no, no. I'm talking about oh. what he said. No, I've seen a mangina, <laughs> Katie. Really? Yeah, when they – never mind. <laughs> Bobby Geiskin <laughs> says, the insane amount of replays for every small thing. No need to review if a three-yard catch was inbound or not. I was watching the game. injuries. We don't need to replay all the injuries. Uh, what, that's what was the game, sport. the Georgia game, that this year? They replayed it every single yeah, time. Yeah. Oh, it was that Florida game. It was a cocktail party, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but we did that. Up. I liked when they replay injuries. No. Um, what? FCI yeah, I do. FCS, I was watching this weekend. Targeting didn't exist in FCS this weekend. They really? just let the boys play. Beautiful. Oh, shout out to FCS. I watched uh, Sam Houston and North Dakota State. That was a good game. I, I enjoyed that. This weekend's uh, semifinals, semifinals, JMU. JMU, we have some JMU. P uh, PFT went to JMU. Yeah. Ebo went to JMU. Okay. Because everyone knows who Ebo is. <laughs> uh, Sadval98 <laughs> says 12 p.m. kickoffs. I don't mind 12 p.m. kickoffs. Uh, group of five guys says – Well, they, they, do, they do suck – Especially like the further west you go, because the earlier it is, they yeah. do suck if you're going to tailgate. Like uh, no one wants to get at a fucking tailgate yeah, at eight o'clock in the but, morning. But here's the thing yeah. that offers that that post win cool down tailgate. People don't talk about it a lot. Every when everybody says tailgate, they think before the game. But that that post, you go back to your tailgate after that the games. post win. Uh, come down and and then the the sun kind of sets and it gets cool it gets you know it's a it's a nice beautiful thing. But that, you're so depending on what happens, you're so tired because you had to get up so know, early. The, the afternoon win, games, matter. the afternoon games are the best for the post tailgate because then you get back and it's around dinner time, so you've got dinner tailgate food and you can put on the primetime games. Um, group of five. Nah, this one's just bitching about group of five and not being able. To oh, I'm so. Five. Oh, that's another thing I hate. Hey, group of five fans, put together a better schedule, okay? Yeah. Um, Grow up. Bobby Geiskin, <laughs> again, says targeting. Make it like the flagrant foul rule in basketball. I really did thought, think this offseason they would revisit it. 
there has to be intent involved in targeting. There needs to be levels of, of it. I think you can give him a penalty, but if he doesn't have intent, I don't think you should levels throw him out to of the this game. shit. Paige Browning, one thing she hates about college football is the NCAA. Speaking of the NCAA, something nobody asked for. They just extended that guy for basically a hundred years. Oh yeah, Mark yeah. Emmer. Yeah. Yeah. And and the, nobody asked for that. I, you know what? The, what his what investor the, he did what? I just don't think yeah. it matters. I don't think it matters. It, no, it's not in him issue. It's a council. It's the group that you need whoever, to actually worry about. But he's like the he's like Roger Goodell. He falls on the. But the whoever sword. the next Mark Emmert is would just be just as bad as Mark Emmert. Like it doesn't matter. Mark Emmert. Yeah, whoever's matter. choosing the yeah. job. Yeah. Well, like Katie just said. The board. You have to hold them accountable. Uh, and stand Still. with us, uh, ND fan says people that want an 18 playoff. He hates that. The game. Teams with only four teams are already mostly blowouts. History doesn't lie. Eight teams would be more of the same. Too small of a sample size. Yeah. And that's yeah. too small. Oh, you've got it up there. Um, Kyle Sullivan says, I hate when I'm watching the CBS Game of the Week. I've only got one point here so far. I hate when I'm watching the CBS SEC Game of the Week and they don't play the intro music. I want the intro music played every time we come out of commercial. I don't care if they're carting a player off or play the music. Uh, I like the, play, the fact that I'm going to play it one time. Yeah, yep. no, because it, it makes it, me get there. Yes, it would be the novelty would wear off if you played it too much. We don't have much left. A couple years. You think they can buy don't it? Don't say that. I'm just saying. I don't say it. Can you, you think they can buy it? ESPN? The song. I yeah, that's what I'm saying. CBS seems like they don't need the money. I feel like they wouldn't. Um, no, because they, they, you know what they want? They want people to be like, damn, we missed the CBS really good music. Point. Yep. Trey Absher says, changing an overtime rule because a seven-overtime game happened twice in all of history. Give him a point. He's getting a point. Shout out Trey Absher. Trey Absher's getting a point. Uh, Iman Maslin says, uh, the amount of sponsorship that's around football in general, get to the action and quit showing us commercials every chance you get. I mean. <laughs> Got to make money, brother. Got to yeah. make money. Uh, sorry. Got to make money. Uh, go back. I want to see what that is. That's specific. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. James wow. Thomas says, I'm in a minority here. But I cannot stand Wisconsin. I hate everything about them and the fact Nebraska has not been able to beat them in years. They're now what Nebraska used to be, and it pisses me off. Well, A, they're not what Nebraska used to be. No. Uh, I just want Nebraska to be able to compete again. Well, you're just a sad Husker fan. That's fair. I'm a no, sad fan, too. You're allowed to hate. When people – Buckeye John says, when people say, as a blank fan, while making a statement to give it credibility. I actually like that. Give him a point. Point. Buckeye John, because it's true. It goes back to the same. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I got to give Paige a point too. She said the NCAA yeah. is Paige. Yeah, the the it's the same mentality. Where it's like as like a fan, who cares what your school is? Just make your point. Who cares where you went to school? Oh, Just wait, make no, your point. No, this could be good. Let me. Sarah, is that a new a new girl? No, she's, she's been, been. She in? always likes our tweets. Sarah, Sarah might be my favorite because Paige isn't in the alley. Sarah, you might be my favorite well, girl. Yeah, shout out to her. She's been shout supporting out to everybody for a while. Hey, Sarah. Shout out to all the girls. The hype around a mediocre coach coming into a program that's been falling, re- failing repeatedly through multiple coaching tenures, this is the one who's going to turn it around. No, they won't, Kevin. We'll go 500 best at best and lose to the teams that matter. That's a point. That's a point. That's Tennessee football. That's that's saying Jeremy Pruitt's going to be the guy now. This guy's going to be the guy now. This guy. No, the last four times you've hired a clown. Maybe you're just a clown program. Wait, what? 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 Undefeated champion Wait, tweeter said what? We're doing the eyes of Texas thing. Tensions boil over uh, UT Austin over the uh, eyes I of Texas like where read. students are refusing the work and a man with a gun crashed a virtual event. How oh, do you wow. how do you okay. crash a virtual event? I don't know, but that story is from last night, Jack. That thing has been going on for a while. I understand it's very serious. How I do just, you might crash just, with a, a That's what I was wondering. All right. Um I hate how every season talking heads go on and on about the SEC and the Big Ten is the only real conference. Well, play better football, you yeah. stupid-ass conference. I'm not giving you a point. Play hey, better who's football. Won, who's won all the national championships yeah. recently? Be, beat the SEC, beat A-A-C, the Big Ten, beat Ohio A-A-C, State. ACC, SEC, Big Ten. Is A-C- that it? I would say, yeah, I mean, ACC does have a claim, but uh, Sir Judge Fudge, huh, <laughs> coming from a Notre Dame fan, Notre Dame and its ability to give me a hope for a natty every single damn year, that's actually – that's a good thing. Yeah, even though we just said the coming from a somebody fan, it's like he's shitting on his own fan base. Bowles says uh, – Are you oh, giving him a point? Ice cream, but I didn't give him a point okay. for that. I hate the Big Ten can't play night games in November, December. Fans don't want a big game at noon. I do hate that, too. I'll give him that. I don't want a big game at noon, they but I don't can? mind games Is that a rule? Well, they don't have – like the no, – no, Wait a minute. Maybe no, by November, December, because Michigan, and Ohio State is always in no, in November and it's always at noon. It might. Are think. there not? There are some but stadiums don't have has, lights, right? Penn State, yeah, but Penn, I think most of them do. Penn State has. They all have lights. Come on. No, I think some don't. No. Well, this isn't Michigan has it. Ohio well, State has. Well, the big has, ones do. They all have lights. I think Purdue recently put this in isn't lights. This is a twelve-year-old softball. No, right? she's not. I think Purdue put in lights like two years like ago. Like last year, two years ago. Purdue just put in put in lights. Northwestern has lights. Yeah, they had a night game. Yeah, okay. 
but I think that started because stadiums didn't have lights, right? Wait, they used to be Dyke Stadium. What? What? Yeah. How do you yeah, spell cool. that? I'll spell it that. Okay. Um, all right. Who plays at Rice Eckler Stadium? Utah. Utah. I only know that guy. I looked it up because I was watching. Uh, <laughs> oh, who no, wrote no, that, that fucking question? question? Casey, by the way, yeah. I wouldn't have known that. Thank I you. Have. Yeah, no. well, I know it. Um, it's because you wrote oh, it. Yeah, you're As, I did not write that question. I'm going to be writing questions for nothing. As a Georgia fan, I hate that our players develop after college. We lose to a mediocre South Carolina, Florida every year. We recruit an unlimited amount of five-star quarterbacks, but they always suck or leave. Well, you're just sad. You're just a sad. That's not yeah, a point. That's sad. No uh, point. Cottonwood Joey hates Baylor. <laughs> Cottonwood Joey, speak to me. Some, some of these are too specific. We asked about college football. Not, yeah, not no, about but you know that I this is going to happen. Again, this is, uh, should, this is what happens wrote. to college football. The insane amount of replays, okay. Clock stopping after first down and no two-minute warnings. Also, half times are way too long. I like that, Tanner Demera. Uh, I like that the clock stops. I like the clock stops. I like the clock stops. I would I, like a two-minute warning. Yes. Or like a, but and half times give way to the band. Um, I hate that we I don't like have more prominent schools two-minute. playing on week zero. I'm thankful we get some football, but no one cares about New Mexico State against UTEP. Okay. I do. Uh you know, I did like Miami, Florida a couple years ago on week zero. I went to that. And, and, and yeah. birthed one of the greatest videos. Oh, yeah. we got to going. i got to be yeah. done by. Um, all right. We got 20 minutes. Oh, and we then have you're going to run get away. To. We have a lot to get to. What? Nothing. Inner bo- it was an inner thing, an inner beef between all of us. What? He got mad at me last week because I didn't stay and read the ads because I had to make a train. And then he texted me and said, you got to get serious about ads. I am very serious about ads. I did it once. I did it once. Brandon. I've done it before, like uh, back in college football season, but I haven't done it in like six months. That's not true, but it's okay. It's fine. I don't care to do I'm, – I'm fine doing the ads by myself or with Jack and Katie. You told me to leave. No, I, I don't care that you leave. This is not a me and you beef. If I don't make – my station only has one every two hours. If I don't make that one, I'm stuck here till 9 o'clock. I know you work here till 9 o'clock all the time. I got kids, boy. I never said you got to stay until 9 o'clock. I don't. I am fine doing the ads, Brandon. This is not coming from you. me. Dan Wolken yesterday for USA Today. I will not belabor this because politics are boring, stupid, and they make all of us idiots. But he he, tw- he tweeted out his column that the SEC should require uh, vaccinations to get into stadiums this year to help the lagging South. First of all, the South isn't lagging in the fight against coronavirus. In fact, it's leading the way. But he has been someone who is pro doom and gloom the whole time. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to harp on that. But he knows he is writing for the yes group think tanks he's going to get in California and New York. And he knows nobody in Southeastern Conference is going to heed this column. He knows they're not going to listen. He knows this is a non-starter. He is just trying to score points on the Internet with this column. Fine. I try to score points on the Internet all the time. My only thing is this. Dan – You have covered SEC football for a while. You've spent the last two years alienating everything, every college football fan that reads your shit by telling them that they don't deserve football, telling them that they shouldn't have it, by telling them that they're bad people for wanting it. So, Dan, forgive us if we're not going to listen every time you cry wolf. You have done it for for, for 14 months now, and telling people that they're assholes, telling people that they're stupid, telling people they don't believe in science – is not working, will not work, and you need to focus on the college football that got you to where you are in this life. You were a good college football writer before you decided to be a political writer. Shut the fuck up and cover college football. The What you just said at the end is my biggest thing. Like, Can we not just – talk about football. He's not the only one. Stuart no, he's Mandel not. Did it too. No, they well, will not stick to no, sports. No, but, but it's not even, It's not, I'm not even just talking about the left, the right, anybody. I want everyone to talk about sports. Like, why does everything have to be politicized? And I understand that in this climate, everything is just kind of naturally politicized. But like, we've said this over and over and over. Just because I want college football to be played in 2020 does not make me somebody that's on the far right. Just because I want something happens doesn't mean I'm on the far left. It's like, can't we just talk about college football? Why do we have to do this every single time? You alienate everyone when you immediately make it about politics. Let me, let me uh, say one thing about it, and then I will move on to the next, next guy. Uh, I believe in vaccines. I believe in this vaccine. I will get this vaccine. I don't have this vaccine yet. I just got over COVID. I have this vaccine. I, you have this vaccine. I believe in vaccines. I do not believe in anyone's – I do not believe – 
that I should be able to mandate my belief on others. Some people might not believe in the vaccine. Some people might not want to get the vaccine. I will never, I don't think there should be a rule uh, enforced by a fucking football program of all things that you have to get this if you want to enjoy this. No, everybody, we're all grown enough to make our own choices. I believe in personal liberty, and I'm not going to tell Jack he has to get the vaccine to go somewhere. I believe in it. I'll get it. But that's where I believe it ends. And I don't think preaching and saying SEC should require everybody in the South to get vaccines, I think that's just stupid. And it's, it's, it's hey, look at me journalism, and it has nothing to do with college football. Everyone should be able to choose for themselves, in my opinion. And if I, I've gotten the vaccine, I believe in vaccines, I believe everyone should get the vaccine. But if you don't want to get it, I'm not going to tell you that you should get it. That is your right as an American, to do what you want. Now, on the other side, I think Clay Travis, who I like. Also has gone super political, though. I like Very political, just on the other side. Uh, I like Clay Travis, um, but his Sarah Fuller thing is weird. He's got to quit this. Like, like he, uh, During the draft, he tweeted out, uh, oh, weird, Sarah Fuller, didn't, this great kicker from Vanderbilt, didn't get drafted. What was all the fuss about? And then uh, yesterday, or a couple days ago, she got replaced. She's a freshman, first of all. She got replaced in the soccer game. And he said, Sarah Fuller got replaced. Uh, why, what was the big fuss about this? Like, Sarah Fuller happened last year. Clay, you got to let it go. You got to let it go. He, this this benefits nobody to keep bringing this up. Here's the thing is that you, you mentioned it with Dan Wolken. He's speaking to an audience where he's going to get the yeah. yes men. So is Clay, just on the opposite side he's of the spectrum. He's playing the hits, yeah. And, I mean, I've known Clay forever, for a decade now. And when Clay was, and I hate saying, quote, sticking to sports, like I think he was one of the best, and he still is one of the best sports writers out there. I just don't necessarily agree with going full steam ahead political on either side because it does alienate. Clay is sticking to that brand. Yeah. I don't agree with it. But the Sarah Fuller thing isn't really sticking to a political brand. It's just a weird thing. It's just, I just weird. Think, I just think Clay Travis is better than the Sarah Fuller stuff, and he should probably just drop he, it. He, I mean, you've read Dixieland Delight. I mean, he's one of the best writers, and when he talks about sports, like he knows what he's doing. But it. You want me to come? Yeah, you go ahead. I'll come. I think it's uh, trivia he's doing. Yes. Rolling uh, down the backwoods. Good luck. Tennessee Jack. Byway. Bye. One arm on the I just, um, I, I'd like to just put it on record that Hold I just would prefer people to not talk politics all the time. With the other. I just don't feel Sweet like Sweet soft southern mm -hmm. That's Dixieland a lot. Yeah. You said it, I just had to sing it. It's a good book. You like that song? I don't know if I like fully heard it. I mean, I probably have, just not aware of it. You're off the show. It's a good song. I had a great run. book. They played it out. They played it out, Alabama, and they yeah, kept yeah. saying the wrong things. Um, you can't, yeah, you can't say yeah. the swear words. So I, I guess I'll rank the covers next week because Jack just left. Yeah, and also we, you don't you have to go? I got to go do something, but yeah. What did we not cover? We, we've we've been doing this a while. We didn't cover this. You know what? You know what? Let, you know how we're gonna end it. Let's do this. Okay. Let's do Tinder recruiting. I like it. Okay, so we discovered a little while ago that uh, Tinder dating profiles and recruiting analyst uh, analysis of for high school boys <laughs> are pretty much the same thing. So now we enter the now we enter the portion of the show where we talk about we read recruiting pro profiles that are probably sexual in nature. Oh shit! Was, He's back that already. Quick. That was quick. Damn! It's, it's a second don't, one today. Don't talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Don't talk. Don't about talk it. about it. All right. Don't so this is uh, this is for a receiver. Here we go. First of all, you didn't bold the first one. I, I think you should above average size and build. Um, shows the ability to make plays from all over the field. Can be a downfield receiver. Long strider, very smooth, with excellent body control. <laughs> has has not been. <laughs> Has not been verified as far as speed. Can still get more explosive. In and out. Still on the raw side as far as crap, but has great upside with his natural athleticism and competitiveness. I mean, do they just not realize what Would they're doing? Would you swipe doing? right or left on that guy? I'd swipe right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay, um, this is for a corner. <laughs> <laughs> How are these real? How did somebody write this seriously? Okay. Yeah, I tried a to corner. find the most vulgar ones I could. A physically imposing defender with plenty of length. Ball magnet of sorts. Really? A ball magnet. A oh, so ball magnet. It's funny when he says, <laughs> after the physically imposing and with plenty of length, owns a 74-inch. Now it says wingspan, but let's Owns just... Owns a 70... Like, with a 74-inch wingspan? Why do we have to own it? Okay. Um, smooth with his footwork. 
relatively fluid in the hips, will put his hands on wide receivers, mm -hmm. shows good control of his body once airborne, oftentimes relies a little too much on his length to mask any of his mistakes. Don't we all, brother? Don't we all? <laughs> it's Boy, not that's the, a good problem to have. It's not the size of the package. It's the delivery. Uh, I don't think that's true. Yep, I I, it absolutely we, we can be true. This last night. Oh, I didn't realize yes. you had you, you guys broke down the film. <laughs> had, a, had, a, had a coaching session last night. Yes. Uh, all right, this is a, a defensive end. Owns college-ready size. <laughs> Experience yes. in a three-point stance and standing on the edge. <laughs> Flashes impressive pursuit ability with playmaking closing speed. Owns stack and shed strength. Versus bigger. <laughs> if he gets you on your heels, he will literally throw you aside. Active hands. <laughs> His motor runs very hot. <laughs> Goes for the ball when he gets home. Screams, <laughs> all, screams off the edge at times. Goes right. for the ball when he gets home. Hey, who even talks about football do. that way? Go, go with the the quarterback down there. Oh, this is a, a quarterback. Oh, oh. <laughs> won't wow you with his arm strength, but it's functional. Feels natural in the pocket. I bet he does. Creative <laughs> in how he gets the ball out. Can throw from different. Arm angles shows poise and toughness. Got to feel natural in that pocket. Got to. Yeah, again, like the, they're writing these things. Like it's not like we can't we can turn anything to a sexual innuendo on this show. But I mean, no one talks about football that way. Natural feel in the pocket. No, the creative and how he gets the ball out. Uh, is there anything else, or was that it? I just did the four. Did the four? Yeah, that was pretty good. No one speaks uh, that way. Jack, we got to get out of here. I got to get you on soon, but I got to have time for ads because you, you you were mean <laughs> to me last week, and I'm still mad at you about it. Tell me to, to, to get serious about ads. I mean, that's the producer's role. I thought you just pressed record. No, I got to remind you about the ads, too. I'm going to them right now. No, aren't we going to rank. Cover? I'm going to rank uh, before we get out of here. So before the Katie, graphic. Katie, pull these up when he says Well, them. I don't know because we might have a behind. Huh? I want to have the ads up because we're going to have a behind. Yeah. No, we're not doing ads right now. We're going to do one more thing. We're doing the NCAA I'm doing cover. ranking the oh, NCAA okay. football yeah. covers. What am I pulling up? Uh, you're pulling up. Um, these year covers. All right, yeah, rank them. You're pulling up uh, these years. I'm going to give you the list of numbers very soon. What are you doing? I'm Why can't she can just pull it up. When while you, I do it? Yeah, when you say it. Okay. Uh, number five, best NCAA football cover of all time happened NCAA 2011. Again, he said best, not worst, even though it's – It's like my only yes. It's my only SEC guy on the list. Uh Tim Tebow was college football for four years. He was on the cover of NCAA football 2011. Actually, it was different on Xbox and, uh, and PlayStation. But Tim Tebow had a great cover, very active. The later covers are better because the earlier covers are boring. But I do have a couple earlier covers too. So Tim Tebow, uh, 2011, my number five NCAA cover athlete of all time. Number four, double cover, NCAA 13. This is the only double cover I think they did. Uh, was RG3. And Barry Sanders with the Heisman Trophy at the bottom. That should probably be higher now that I'm looking at it. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, that should be that higher. That is beautiful. Barry it's Sanders, RG3, and the Heisman Trophy at the bottom. That's unbelievable. The uh, colors on that are amazing. Number three happened in NCAA 2005. And this might mm -hmm. be a little biased because of how much I loved the game back then. But it's Larry Fitzgerald catching a football. And Larry Fitzgerald catching a football can sell me anything. It's just oh, a beautiful sure. picture right there. It is. And I love the way that they – this is such a nerd thing to say – the way they designed the graphic with his arm over it on one side. Yeah. So it's like impeding into the, the logo. Love that. Number two, NCAA 07. Ooh, I actually I, – I like this one. Reggie Bush. Yes. Again, I talked about – I know about, this one. This I talked one about – Everywhere. As much as I've talked about him before – Tim Tebow was football for four years. Reggie Bush was college football for a couple of years, too. Mm -hmm. Not not four, but he was college football. Look at those gorgeous Actually, uniforms. Actually, for the graphic, can I, can I reorder my list? Yeah. Number five is still Tebow. Number four is Fitzgerald. Number two is Reggie Bush. Number – I'm sorry. Five Tebow, four Fitzgerald, three Reggie Bush, two RG3 and Barry Sanders. Okay? For the graphic. You got it? Hello? <laughs> Yeah, we can go back and... They weren't listening Just to worry about for the graphic. Uh, no, I know, no. Yeah, we'll yeah. go back. Even we And number one, the number one cover of all time. I think it's because it's the last one. 2014, 
It's the one I still play today. I look at it, it just reminds me of the greatness of back then. He's not a player that did great in the NFL, but Denar Robinson, that was an iconic cover. That is the one Dan went famous for last year. Denard Robinson, 2014. That is my favorite NCAA Look at cover. that fucking helmet. Uh, oh, by the way, did you see? Oh yeah, did you? One see? of the um, did no, you, K- Casey. Okay. No, one of the. Okay. One of the two. This goes to your point, not Casey's. Unfortunately, Casey. No, um, but nobody else. And knew the it. FCS football game. Oh. Oh, uh, over the weekend, one of the teams that's actually in the semifinals this. This coming Delaware? weekend is Delaware, who has this exact same helmet. Mm-hmm. So it's Whatever. not really that Well, you know what else? When we, I can go ahead and just put my hand up, even though Jack and I talked about this. Like, I went on a whole rampage about how much I hate Ohio State stickers. And Jim Harbaugh did bring Michigan's stickers back. But I would like to put this on record. First of all, no one fucking knew that. Like, literally no one knew that because nobody talked about it on this podcast. Mm-hmm. But no one looks at Michigan's helmet and thinks stickers because they if they do have them they're in the very back and there's only a few of them. Yeah, and also, Ohio State's it's the entire helmet. Well, Michigan they don't think they don't think uh, stickers because that ugly ass design that's taking up half the helmet. No, that's not what I'm saying. But you didn't like nobody thinks oh and I put Michigan as my number one helmet and I got Ohio State fans being like ah oh, Michigan has stickers too like it's just no one thinks Michigan and stickers everyone thinks Ohio State and stickers. Stickers are the only thing on Ohio State's helmet. Right, that's the point. Like right. that, like that. Look at the right now. If you had an Ohio State player on the cover of EA Sports, their entire helmet would be full of fucking stickers. Look at that beautiful Michigan helmet. It's not beautiful. Nothing. No stickers. All right. You know why? Because they don't put them on there very often. Ugly ass design is in the way. No. All right. You good? Wait a second. What about my list? What about I, we gotta get it? What 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 are your list? I thought I didn't think you were doing a list. <laughs> you didn't say you were doing I a list. I came I came up with the the we're competing. I thought you were giving it to me. Number five, I have NCAA 14. Denar Robinson. It should Number have been Number four, K- uh, Katie. He's never on it. I know. It should you didn't even have to write these ones down, so because I wrote them down, I'll send them to you. Number four, 2010, pull it up, Crabtree. Well, Mark Crabtree, Texas yeah, Tech, yeah. He's Take a nightmare. look at this one. Nightmare. That's not it. That's uh, Brian Johnson, the one oh. beside it. Nah. They have multiple. Covers. Multiple for 2010. Number three, NCAA football, 2004. Uh, Carson Palmer? Yep. Yep. I don't know why what it is about it, but I just love it. Colors pop. Yep. Number two is Larry Fitzgerald, where we saw him. Number one is 2008. Eight. 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 Jared Zabransky? Yeah. Come on. Yep. Jared why? Zabransky. It's I a think, pretty good. The colors I mean, pop. I think good, NCAA football is defined by the small schools, because you can play with any school you want. <laughs> And this is a small school that came out of nowhere and shocked the entire football world. So Jared Zagaritis, you're probably selling real estate. Jared Zabransky? Zabransky, you're probably selling real estate right now. But, buddy, you're number one on my list. Dreaming of that day. He almost played at Rensselaer Field, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, Casey, you good? I'm good. Am I good? Yep. Got to get out of here. I'm going to read the ads. I'm taking them super seriously. I I do have other things I got to do. But this was fun. Hate, week conti- hate month continues, building up to hate week. If you're oh, still yeah. listening and you advertise with us, thank you so much for keeping the show alive. Shut up, Jack. That's unnecessary roughness. <laughs>